Marco! Marco! Yeehaw! It's bull wrangling time! God damn! We're here. Uh, let's be honest. It's been worse. I've been, I've been later than this before. How, how is this sounding? Let me make sure it's good. Oh, sounds fucking amazing. Um, well, 117 people watching. You already know Wagwan. 125 now. Make sure you go thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the stream. And it's all about residual income. I'm getting everything back in order. As you guys know, it's been uh, it's been a bit of an adjustment, let's say, being in another part of the world in many in many aspects, but also as it pertains to the stream. I foolishly, when I deleted all the stuff that was on my old computer uh, and tried to set up this computer, I accidentally deleted my OBS profile and my Stream Deck profile, which is basically like all the different little scenes, like when the camera goes like this or when it goes to this or whatever, and all the sound effects. I accidentally deleted all of that. So I had to like go in, and I'm still in the process of doing it actually, because that was stuff. Those were profiles that I built over the course of like four years. So I'm still in the process of rebuilding. But anyhow, we've got most of it, you know. Obama. We're we're getting it back, as you can as you can see. So that's good. So that's good. Um, is it? Yeah, audio is good. Uh. I have been getting a lot of comments and I got a lot of comments on the video that I put out about leaving Canada as well as on the last stream, which was the first stream back. And I just want to say I really appreciate these comments telling me, you know, a lot of them were saying something to the effect of, let us know if you need financial support. I take responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Dark Horse. Also, don't interrupt. Thank you. Thank you, Dark Horse. I appreciate that. Who got the membership gifted? Let's see. Odwin, congratulations. Um, a lot of people were saying comments that were the same sentiment, which was like, if, let us know if you need financial support or do a GoFundMe if you have for like legal fees. I've done that before. And honestly, I did not have a good experience with the legal system in that, in that situation. And, um, I, you know, it's not the first time. It's not the last time I'm going to get sued. And so I cannot simply just do a GoFundMe every time I get sued because every time I do, I will be uh, calling upon the goodwill or the good faith gestures of my audience. And it's like I can only tap on that tree so many times. And also the truth is there really is no amount of money that I could ever raise that would be enough to take on even one lawsuit. Like we're talking about – companies that are cults their number one priority it, exactly their number one priority is limiting and controlling the information that gets put out there about them so if i have a massive video that comes out that gets hypothetically let's say i worked on a video for six months and it came out and got nearly a million views in the first week completely independently hypothetically let's just say obviously that never happened right because MLMs love the revisionist history and deleting the truth. But let's say hypothetically that that was to happen with some creator or with me, wink, wink. These, these companies are worth billions. Where the fuck is the button? Billions of dollars. Is it this one? Billions and billions. These companies are worth bil billions and billions. And they would not hesitate to spend a million dollars on a lawsuit. It's just, it's nothing to them. They could drag it out for years. I mean, you've already seen with me, you can, you can assume using your rational thinking over the past few years, knowing about what's happening to me, the things that I've said and haven't said, you know that they can drag this shit on perpetually. So, you know, even if I was to raise a million dollars, with a GoFundMe, hypothetically, it just it, it that could sh that money could so easily be fucking spent entirely on a single lawsuit. It's just not there's no amount of money that's enough. So 
to answer the people who I take responsibility. Thank you. So to answer the people who were saying that, I very much appreciate it. Please know that. Aww. But if you do want to support me and you do want to support me financially, here I'll turn the mic up. My bad. I don't know why the fuck it was turned out. Then what I do actually what I would actually appreciate is uh financial support for continuing to do what I'm doing. You know, this move across the world was not cheap and getting set up was not cheap. And there are, I'm realizing more as I'm over here, how much Canada was set up to like really lock you in. You know, think about if you had like, if you were trying to do what I'm doing right now, but you had a car payment and a mortgage and whatever, which mind you, I didn't even have a car payment or a mortgage. I was renting, but even my rent, like breaking my lease a month early, they want to charge me $1,000 for that because uh, apparently it was in my contract. These are just costs that I have to eat right? Just because of the way the timing was, uh, you know, my insurance, I'm trying to cancel my insurance back home in Canada, my health insurance or whatever. And they want to, you know, they have some clause where I got to buy myself out of it. Same thing with like my internet, expensive ass internet plan back in Canada, my TELUS, whatever. They're like, oh yeah, you still had three months on your contract. So you're going to have to pay. That's, that's the stuff that uh, would mean a lot to me if you guys if you guys really wanted to drop bags where's the button if you guys really wanted to drop bags that's in all transparency that's the type of shit I'd be using it for and just like living living expenses to to you know support the cult support the the mission but when it comes to lawsuit I, I'm pretty sure my lawyer and I have that covered at least for now and uh David thank you David Financial support Appreciate to continue you, doing what you're doing. Here. All right. Test, test. Y'all can still hear me good? Good. Thank you. Thank you, David. I appreciate it. Let's see what y'all are saying in the chat. 180 people watching, 46 likes? No way. Okay, I had to refresh it. 113. Yay, yay. Yay, 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 yay. Thank you for the nice comments. I'm just reading now. Jalen Wright. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Will I be streaming on O Connect? What the hell is O Connect? Is that Omegle? What up, Jelly Snack? A lot of green in the chat. I like that. I like that. Stacking that green. Uh huh. The Home Business King, Vince, back in the chat. What up? Okay. Um. So today, <laughs> as the title of this stream suggests, we will be reacting to yet another video from Dominic Izzo. It's been a long time since we did one of these. And it's been almost a year since the debate with Dominic. Can you believe it? We might have to do an anniversary debate. We might have to do another one. But the amount of restraint that it has taken me for to not watch these videos Dominic has put out. And let me remind you, Dominic has re released, Izzo, MLM, Dominic has released not one, but two lengthy videos about me in the past like two months. And I have not watched either of them because I have been so uh, like determined to only watch them on stream with y'all that I've resisted watching them. Where the fuck is the... I've resisted watching them uh, so that we can watch them together. So here, let me, let me... Ooh, I'm the best. Let me adjust this camera layout here. So... Wow. Okay, I just want to make sure this is working. I might have to... This is my first time trying to do, this is my first time trying to do, uh, that doesn't look right. Oh, I have to refresh this screen capture source. That's why properties restart capture. There we go. There we go. Still learning how to do it on this computer. So as you can see here, um, I, I, it, it looks like I've watched it, but I actually just clicked on it for a second and skipped to a random part to see what the general vibe was, but I didn't actually watch the video. So he has an hour and a half long video called Always Marco is Always Lying. I think that title was changed because when it was originally up there, there was a different thumbnail and there was, I remember the word gaslighting being on the thumbnail. Uh, and then he has this one here on the left hand side called Anti MLM Guru <laughs> Always Marco Caught Scamming in all caps for legal fees. So again, I mean, this is something I've heard many times before that somehow, one second, that somehow me uh, doing anything is, uh, is a scam. You know, Dominic has famously said about me that I have accused everything 
in the world of being a scam that I think everything is a scam. Uh, <laughs> there was a stream I did like, I think it was, it had to have been a year or, or almost a year ago or more than a year ago. Um, it was before the debate. So it would have been January, 2023, where I reacted to a video. There's a live stream on my channel called like, my biggest hater debunked me or something like that. And it's a video of Dominic talking about me. And I have a couple videos reacting to Dominic. Dude, Dominic, we're just going to watch it because Dominic is a movie in his own, in his own right. I have to give him that. Let me uh, open the chat here on my phone so that I can see what y'all are saying. Uh, let's just check out, let's just check out what he said. I, I love these. It's actually, it's actually like a bit concerning how much I enjoy watching people talk bad about me. But I just love, I just know that I'm a good person. I just know I don't do anything wrong. And I just know that whatever they say, I can just slam dunk it and flip it. And because it's not true. So uh, I, I really have zero reservations about like rebroadcasting someone who is purposely trying to put a negative spin on something I'm doing. Most people would be like, no, nah, take the high road, ignore it. Fuck no, <laughs> fuck no, I ain't gonna ignore it. Let's see what he had to say. Let's hear him out. Here we go. Anti-MLM guru, always Marco, caught scamming for legal fees. Even just the title, caught scamming for legal fees. How was I caught? Who caught me? I released the video. Who? Oh shit, who caught me, you know? That's what I wanna know. That's what I don't understand. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, let's uh, let's open it up. Okay, here, the description says, this is Marco's greatest scam ever to get you to donate. He's a genius. I gotta bring the sound effects back, I'm sorry. He's calling me a genius. Aww. He's a genius. Anti-MLM YouTuber Always Marco claims he is being sued, bullied, getting death threats, and being run out of town. Although he wouldn't want any of this to happen to anyone, keep that in mind for later, because I'm sure he will flip on that within moments. If this is true, Marco should absolutely protect himself with all the law available. But Marco offers no evidence or proof that he is being sued, harassed, or bullied, which begs the question, is he scamming for money again? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Okay, so this is hilarious. Um, the top comment is, dude, you lost that debate. Marco warns people like you who just scheme people out of their money. Oh, oh, and then check out these comments. Check out these comments. The comment... Here's a comment from Dominic. He says, uh, will this work if I zoom in? Let me see. Will this work if I go zoom? Let me, let me test something. Screen capture. Yeah, it will. Okay, so look, this is, this is my favorite. So Dominic says, uh, my favorite part of Always Marco's last video was when he spoke about getting a lawyer on contingency where they make no money unless they win, which is the exact thing he attacked all this time in network marketing. The concept of getting paid based on performance and outcome. Yes! Once again, another one of these mindless false equivalences. And obviously this is something Dominic forgot to include in the video because he didn't think of it until after the fact. He was just responding emotionally. But he is basically saying that I'm a hypocrite because I was talking about getting a lawyer on contingency where they didn't get paid unless they win. Whereas in multi-level marketing, uh, I criticize the same thing. People not getting paid until their, uh, un, you know, people's uh, outcomes not being determined until after they put in the work and the effort. I think the big key difference here, Dominic, is that you have a guaranteed, well-studied, well-documented, historical, factual truth that 99 point something percent of all people who endeavor upon MLM will lose money. In the case of a lawyer taking a case on contingency, that lawyer is not just trusting and believing and manifesting they're going to win. For a lawyer to take a case on contingency, it probably means they've done their research on the case to the point that they are pretty confident that they are going to win the case or they have some sort of pro bono budget allocated from their firm or they're already, you know, they don't need the money or they're doing it as a favor. There's so many variables that make this a false equivalent. All things else the same, you could make this uh, comparison but it's not the same in one. And this is why, this is why I, I did an interview yesterday with some fucking French newspaper in France. 
And the girl was, the journalist was very nice. So shout out to her if she's watching this. I did this interview on Zoom and she was asking me like, she was asking me a, a question that was to the effect of like, is there a way to, um, to, to make money in MLM that's legit? And is there a way for it not to be a scam? And is MLM a scam? And what makes it a, and I'm like sitting there and I'm like, fuck man. I said to her, I was like, I know for a fact she had already seen the links to like the FTC's website that showed 99% of people lose money. I said to her, this has been the most like well-documented, historically proven thing that 99% of all people in MLM lose money. I know Dominic is sitting there drooling, watching the computer being like, well, most people who play basketball never make it to the NBA with his next false equivalence ready to go. But I'm explaining to this girl on the, this journalist, I, I told her, I was like, you know, flipping a coin, if you were to flip a coin to decide whether you're going to eat chocolate ice cream or vanilla ice cream, you know, that's a 50-50 chance. Would you hedge your future on a 50-50 chance? Would you, if you knew you had a 50% chance of opening that business and failing, would you do it? Restaurants, I think, are a 54% failure rate within the first year and like an 80-something percent failure rate within the first five years. And many people still choose to do that. But there's a lot of you know, uh, a lot of failure w with restaurants and bars and whatever. And I'm sure if you said, yeah, I'm going to open a restaurant or a bar and you did your research, you would realize, okay, there's a lot of competition. You know, the neighborhood next to my neighborhood is quickly developing. There's going to be even more competition. It's very trendy. There's a lot of human oversight that goes into it. There's a lot of overhead products, vegetables, food goes bad, have to throw it out, staff members, somebody didn't show up for work, blah, 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 the hours. There's a lot of stuff that makes restaurants and bars a volatile business with, a, with such a high failure rate. And even then, some people choose to go into that business. I personally would never get into the restaurant business because my dad did that for such a long time and I worked in his restaurants and I saw the, I saw the stress that that brings and I just thought this is absolutely not what I want to do. But some people still do it. And there's no example I can give you that even comes fucking close to the guaranteed 99% loss rate. I'm sure, I don't have the stats. I don't know how I would even find those stats about how many lawyers who take a case on contingency actually end up winning the case. But there's one thing that I would be willing to absolutely bet my life on. It's not 99%. As a matter of fact, I bet it's lower than 50%. I bet you that most lawyers who take a case on contingency are doing so because they have absolute confidence that they are going to win, which is why it's so rare to find a lawyer who will do it. You know how many lawyers slammed the door in my face or hung up the phone because the very first thing on the phone that I said was that I don't have any money to pay them and they wanted a $10,000 retainer for me to even take their fucking phone call or to even look at my case? You would not believe. So again... We, we haven't even watched the video yet and we're already on to, um, you know, we're already in false equivalence heaven right now. Uh, he says, remember, according to anti-MLMers, anyone who would work for free or pay to their own way to work with no guarantee of an outcome is in a scam. This kid is pure gold. Obviously, some businesses, basically every business requires some startup cost, unless you're doing like some... TikTok drop shipping shit that you can do it for free or whatever. Businesses require overhead, yes. Businesses require startup cost, yes. I'm not arguing that. But we have to look at the whole enchilada, look at the big picture. 99%. This is not a business, okay? Even the most uh, likely to lose game in a casino does not have a 99% loss rate. I know because I worked in a casino. I learned about sunk cost fallacy and how the machines and the slot machines work and all that shit. <laughs> and even then, you know, flipping a coin, if you were to bet money on a coin flip, that's gambling. Why? Because you only have a 50% chance. You have an equal chance that you'll win and lose. That's why it's a gamble. But with MLM, they insist on calling it a business. It's entrepreneurship. It's fucking madness. Um, I don't even need to respond to these because Dominic just gets bodied in the fucking comments, honestly. Look at this one. Uh, can I change to the screen capture screen? Um, OBS screen share. Does this one work? If 
I go like this, hold on, if I go back and I go out and I go screen share, okay, it does. Look at this, look at this comment. You should watch the video first, then do a reaction. Every invalid point you made gets answered after you speak. You go out your way, you go out of your way to miss the point just so you can make content. Okay, I guess I don't even need to react to this. It shows your character that you think a person deserves to have his family harassed. Oh, so in the description, he says he doesn't want anything bad to happen to me, but spoiler alert, he does want something bad to happen to me. You're doing the very same thing you're accusing him of doing. Can't wait for you to get your karma. Um, oh, Patrick, Patrick Ong. I think Patrick Ong made a video too. Somebody sent me some shit that Patrick Ong said. Shorts, here we go. Patrick Ong said, anti-MLM says, MLM reps are full of gibbity gob. That it's like, this is the type of shit where it sounds like it's rooted in logic, but it's complete fucking nonsense. I don't even have a, a flashy term to give you, like double speak. It's just nonsense, flim flam, gobbledygook, blah, hoopla. Not gibbity <laughs> Got him! <laughs> Patrick! Wow, Patrick? Hold up, bro. How have I been sleeping on this dude? Patrick. Dude, Patrick is dope. Oh, BS things anti MLM are saying. Oh, he's got a whole pro MLM channel? Bro, Patrick, you. Oh, Patrick, you are the guy. Oh, Patrick is the one. Cognitive dissonance of an anti MLMer. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Hold on, I think my shit, I think my shit is glitched out right now. Okay, okay, here we go. C can I, here we go. Does this? <laughs> Trying to hard to separate MLM from the rest of the industry so you can attend the... Okay, it's just nonsense. Wow. Dude, that, that was really good. That was, <laughs> wrong button. That was, hey, dude. So apparently it has come to my attention that uh, when we try to give a logical explanation, right, as to why the entire population cannot be recruited, you try to say, uh, uh, use the strongman fallacy. It is okay to use the strongman fallacy and say that uh, when the MLM try to use, like, uh, try to address the phenomenon that will never come to pass right we try to address that phenomenon we're not talking about business practices but it is okay for the anti mlm reps to counter argue and use the strongman fallacy and say that oh uh, our arguments are flip-flop flame and then uh uh gibbity gob and then say that uh Woo! that's kind of a fire ad lib gibbity gob i can see migos doing that shit gibbity gob gibbity uh, we are do talking rubbish because uh, they do not have to use the recruit five in order to recruit five in order to recruit five. There's no endless change of recruitment. What the fuck? <laughs> I love this guy. Go back. I want to rewind. What the fuck? I love, dude. Patrick, dude, holler at me, bro. I gotta get you on uh, on the stream, bro. I would love to actually have a conversation with you and hear what you gotta say because, uh, man, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. From my perspective, oh here, this is Patrick in the comments again. Here we go, Patrick in the comments. I cannot wait to read you guys' comments. Patrick says, from my perspective, always Marco is making money off of his audience and now is going on holidays with the money that he got from his audience. He's never gotten any pushback from network marketing at all. Well, you can go search my name in the Canadian lawsuit database uh, and, and see that that's not true, but but if you ask me, I will not be able to give a source because he does not say it. He needs to lie to his audience in order to carry on the grip. He needs to keep the audience on the edge of their seat hot all the while he's making the videos or when he's on vacation so that when he gets back to making this video again, the audience will be fully attentive and ready to donate money again. It's just what I see and my opinions that I form from watching how he does things. Dominic's going to be like, right on, brother. Fact. <laughs> grown ass man dude i have to see you guys' comments about our boy patrick because this shit is fucking hilarious gub gub what do you say give it gob nah bro you guys are sleeping on my boy patrick right now look at these comments i'm reading your guys' comments now marco has been debunked yeah you guys got me 
99% of lawyers lose money. So true. So true. Uh, <laughs> the background is giving YouTube apology video. Oh, yeah, me in my kitchen. He's so real. He's so real. He's so down to earth. Just wait till I get a green screen. We're going to be back in the mansion in no time. Um, so fucking funny. Thank you, Specs, defending me and saying this stream is giving super hunk mega millionaire James Bond strong man. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, you guys are hilarious beefing with each other in the chat. What's the over under that Dominic is currently rubbing his cufflinks as he rehearses his future comebacks to Marco? Oh, it's 100%. This stream, just with the concurrent viewers we have right now, has already got more views than Dominic's entire channel in the last year. Not that it's a competition. I just bring that up to say, if Mans was actually saying something sensible and something insightful and profound, for sure more people would be watching the shit. Uh, dude, I did not expect the dancing. That was fucking hilarious. Give me the gup. He got me, dude. When you don't have any... When you don't have... A logical comeback just dance on them I never thought of that why did I never think of that dude the next video Dominic does I'm just gonna be like ah <laughs> next video next video Dominic does I'll do an hour and a half long video reacting to something I did and I'm just gonna be like huh. ah that's what I'm gonna do on the next one wow that is so fucking funny hoopla hoopla that is so fucking funny. You cannot make this up. Wow, we haven't even watched any of it yet. 250 people watching, only 150 likes. Yes! Thumbs it up. Thumbs up the ting. All right, finally, let's watch. Anti-MLM guru, always Marco, caught scamming for legal fees. Here we go. And, and uh, oh, who's interrupting? New fan, dropping by to smash thumbs up. Out at dinner right now, so I'm going to replay later. Hey. Hey. Thank you. Order a side of gip goop or whatever you said. Flim floop. Order a side of that on it. Um, okay. This is amazing. This is, this is, I'm having fun with this. Here we go. Anti MLM content. For more anti MLM content creators destroyed, or if you want to watch podcast interviews on some of the greatest MLM leaders in the industry, or if you want training on MLM so that your business can be led with integrity, be sure to subscribe to the Bull of MLM Network Marketing Warfare. In the description, it says, although we wouldn't want any of this to happen to anyone, if this is true, Marco should protect himself with all the law available. Watch how, he's, watch how he flips on this. Channel here on YouTube. Thanks for watching. You're welcome. All right, let's watch this together. This is uh, I'm Leaving Canada by Always Marco. Now, guiltily, every now and then I do watch Marco's stuff because he... Guiltily. He, let, me, let me put him on 1.25 speed because this is going to take us a fucking minute. He actually affords an opportunity for me to make sure that what I'm talking about is legitimate, right? He poses great challenges. And I think that if you're in the network marketing business, you need to know how to wind up backing what the, what the people are criticizing you of. Um, if you watch the debate, again, it was, I enjoyed it. It was two hours, we went back and forth. This guy keeps talking about the debate every opportunity he gets because it's the most exposure he's ever gotten. That, that stream has like 60 some thousand views, I think. But again, they always like to move the goalpost about who wins and who's not and all this kind of crap. I don't care. You're never, it's like religion. <laughs> yeah, I'm his guilty pleasure, Sanjila, right? Mars, what up, Mars? He looks like a cartoon. Well, both sides are arguing about an ideology. And it yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry to keep interrupting. Aaron says, Dom, you're literally watching this right now. Get out of here with this now and then shit. Yeah, I mean, he's reacted in the last month. In the last month, he's made two hours worth of content about me, like, pre-recorded, not live stream riffing, talking about other shit along the way. Like he has an hour and a half long video reacting to uh, my video called, uh, what was my video called? Exposing the truth, exposing the lie of legitimate MLMs, I think it was called. Uh, and then he has this one, 30 minutes, 35 minutes. How do you make a 35 minute video? My video was only 12 minutes. It sucks. If you're familiar with my content, I agree with some of the anti MLM uh, content, content creators uh, stuff about what they accuse the network marketing space of being, which is hype and emotionalism and sensationalism and the lying and this and that kind of stuff that needs to be changed. <clears throat> that needs to be changed. You'll always see they never offer a solution. They never, they never say, well, we could change this. And their only solution is to wind up eradicating the industry. That's not going anywhere. All right. I want to see this. Uh, Marco, I guess has been experiencing some issues or whatnot. And He's got to move out of Canada and he stopped doing anti MLM stuff, which not surprising because he stopped doing comedy because that was a scam. 
I can't remember what the other thing he stopped doing. He had a YouTube channel that was full of a lot of other uh, kinds. Oh, rap. He started doing music as well, too. Stop doing that. So Marco's MO is to start something, capitalize off of it, and then leave the industry. And then say it's a scam, right? So funny. I was doing all of those things that he mentioned long before I ever made a video about MLM. So we'll have to find out what he... And, and also capitalize off of it. Hold on. Go back. Go back. Go back to the, go back to the OBS scene where I go... Ready? Capitalizing off of it. The fuck are you talking about capitalizing off of it? You think I made money off of stand-up comedy and rap music, bro? Okay. What he has to say on this one too as well. Uh, let's give it a listen and I'm just gonna watch this with you guys and enjoy. It has reached the point of Scientology level cult information control and harassment. That is what I'm dealing with right now. Over the last four and a half, almost five years of making videos on multi-level Shout out to me because the lighting in the background of that scene and the yellow and the blue and the this the whole frame looked very beautiful. I put time into that shit. Marketing companies, I have- You really have only been making them for about uh, a year. You There's a- Huh? ...videos on multi-level marketing companies, I have- You really have only been making them for about uh, a year. You did one or two before, but it's been about a year. Just one year, dude. Really, really recent. Oh, sorry guys. Dominic reminding me, sorry, how could I be so foolish as to forget? Dominic reminding me that actually, I haven't been doing this uh, anti-MLM thing for, for four, almost five years. I've only actually been doing it for one year because let's see, I released WFG part one, two, three, all of those, okay. I released ACN part one and two. I released uh, two videos about a certain MLM that dealt with foreign exchange that was popular during COVID, whose name I can't say. I dropped a long interview with my friend Fidel. I dropped a long interview with Robert Fitzpatrick. I dropped a video explaining the mathematical impossibility of making money in an MLM called Why Making Money in an MLM is Impossible, which was actually the video that Dominic responded to that I, that I first reacted to last year. Dude Monkey, thank you. Dude Monkey dropped $2 on Super Chat, so that was another thing that happened. Um, I did several debates in 2021 on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, so yeah, but I thought that's what, I thought I did all that stuff. But thanks to Dominic, I now realize that I was wrong. Thank you, Dominic. I actually only dropped one or two. Thank you, Dominic. I actually only dropped one or two and uh, I've only been doing this a year. Thank you for reminding me. Really appreciate you, Dominic. And uh, definitely, thank you, thank you. Behavior, information, thought, and emotion. These are the four pillars of a person's identity that cults use to control them. I'm making this video to let you know specifically about the cult information control tactics that are being used against me right now. There are many- Marco used to rap? Used to? What that shit Drake say? On 7 a.m. in, uh, 7 a.m. on Bridal Path? I wish everyone could tell me exactly what they need from me the first second they speak to me. I'm not with all the secrecy, secretly beefing me behind closed doors and playing it peacefully for the streets to see. Homie, have some decency. Woo! Anyways. Many ways that a cult. I'm going to try to keep a straight face through all this shit because I'm going to tell you, I'm sure he's going to play victim and all of this. And I want to I want to say that I, if he's right, my God, if, if whatever I hear is actually accurate, then I hope nothing happens to him. I don't, the, the fact that some of these people are crazy, like he played those two radio guys who sound like they're talking in a tin can or something, they are obsessed. <laughs> Scott and Peter, even my enemies don't fuck with my enemies. You know, these people, anyways. Best with him. Personally, my introduction to Marco was seeing his stuff. I did a response video to his. And for those of you who do remember, this was his response to me doing a video of him. He DM'd me on my Instagram. This comment, I love how they act like Marco is some huge billionaire whale because we give him some super chats, LOL, right? Thank you, dude monkey for the 10, uh, for the $10 super chat as well. Okay. Yeah, the most bomb year of live streaming to exist. No kidding. Yes, let's, let's check out. This is true. This is what I sent him. This was in, um, this was, so that video that Dominic did about me was in 2022, like, maybe a year or so after, around a year after I released the video called Why Making Money in an MLM is Impossible. Now, during 2022, you may know, I actually wasn't making anti-MLM content. I had been sued once. Um, I, I had started dealing with the ha harassment of MLM and seeing how bad it could be. Uh, my Instagram had been taken down, I think, 15 times in the course of three months. Uh, it would get taken down. They would use these...
you know, they would use those sketchy services that you can pay to like ban someone's account or spam somebody's account with like bots and followers and fake engagement and shit like that. Thank you, dude monkey. I will pay for more raps. <clears throat> Thank you. And uh, at that point, I was like, you know what? I just don't want to do this anymore. That was the that was that period of my life. And so when Dominic made that video and sent me this message, I was just super not interested in uh, engaging with it. And you know, Dominic has a way of just like already being on the offensive, like Scott Johnson, like he's already on the offensive as like uh, a defense mechanism, if you will, an offense mechanism. And um, yeah, this was my response to him, which I don't know why he's bringing it up again, because during our debate, actually, even before the debate, I said, you know what, I apologize. At the time, I didn't have the foresight to realize that I would come back to making the content so much better and uh, that I could actually use Dominic for content. So, uh, you know, I apologize for burning the bridge, which of course he immediately, when he, when he sensed that there was an opportunity for him to be on my channel, even after that message, uh, obviously all was forgiven and he leaped at the opportunity. So I do have to LOL at, at what I said to him though. So children, children at home, cover your ears. Ha ha ha, I love it. 60 year old scammer incel fat boy on TRT making YouTube videos about me. Uh, L M A O O. By the way, in the short clip I watched, you said that you actually enjoy when someone tells you you're a fucking loser. So I'll amend my previous statements just to say, suck my dick. Laughing face clown. I don't even make videos about MLM anymore because because uh, 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 everyone should already know they're scams at this point. Thanks to bottom feeders like you. However, the problem still persists. Karma will always come back around. I'm not a loser. I was spitting though, go on. Yes, Marco, karma, karma always does come back around. Now, Marco and I have talked about this. We did a debate, two hour debate beforehand early that day. We spent about 30 minutes on a live going back and forth. He's not a bad dude. The personality he puts up online, that's his personality, that's how he's gonna make money. He was making money, probably be making conservatively between a thousand to fifteen hundred hours a week off of doing live videos on YouTube. You guys donated to his- Let's make it more stuff all the time he was showing at least if that was accurate man he was making 500 bucks a video but off air what i saw with marco's personality he's not a bad dude i per have no personality problem with him but i want to kind of put this seed in your mind if he's going to claim he's victim on things put seeds in me dom put some seeds in go ahead oh, can y'all see this oh i'm leaking my secrets leaking my secrets right he's the victim of whatever harassment's coming by this was un this was just a response. This is the first response I had gotten from Marco on me doing content of him, which was just arguing and uh, with his anti MLM content. So if Marco is this willing to, without even contacting me or the first contact with me, being like this, what is he willing to say to other people then for him to play victim later on and go? I have to move out of Canada because they're attacking me. Okay, Marco, I think we can establish this is your character, and already you have no credibility. You're a victim. So let's keep going and let's listen to what he has to say. But I wanted to establish that fact first. Marco is not who you think he is. He's more a scam artist than the scam artist he's claiming to go up against. Okay. Like multi level marketing can go about <laughs> silencing outside sources of information. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's just such a reach. All you, that's all you can say. Okay. Information such as myself, a guy who makes videos specifically about the tactics used by these multi-level marketing pyramid schemes. You already know the basic ways that they'll try to discredit my videos by saying that I'm just a hater or I'm just doing this for clicks and views or any. Actually crazy how handsome I look in that quarter zip collared fucking, uh, whatever the fuck you call it. Other nonsensical justifications that they have. Another. Okay. You guys do that all the time. You guys attack people all the time. Jesse Lee Ward still talked about. You got CC Suarez, who attacked her cancer, who attacked her death. CC Suarez, who personally DM'd me and said she was going through a tough time having a miscarriage. I never made fun of her. I never brought it up until a post I did the other day saying that if we're gonna make fun of Jesse Lee Ward, then we need to make fun about everybody else then, right? Julie Jo, who is on, she's a uh, self-admitted, has mental health problems. I believe she's was her candles walking on Lexapro. So she's got some just depression issues. You have Jessica Hickson who cries in almost every video she does. So if everybody's got an issue and you would, you guys all attack, you, you saw what you wrote 60 year old fat boy incel on TRT, you guys go personally. So we don't have a fucking ounce of sympathy for you because whatever you're going through right now, Marco, you most likely deserve it. <laughs> We're only seven minutes in and he said, I deserve it. When in the de description, he said, if it's true, it shouldn't happen to anyone but he doesn't think it's true. But if it is true, I deserve it. Yeah! 
Um, also, Dominic, please don't hold the mental illnesses and personal struggles of my fellow anti-MLM creators against me because I'm perfect. Let's just keep let's just keep it honest, right? We're all you know we all know that here. This is the cult. The emperor does no wrong, and it's all good. Um, but I will say, Dominic, you are talking shit right now with this statement because I nobody. I, I will stand on this. You will have to send me the clip for me to change my tune on this. Nobody said anything bad about Jesse Lee Ward's cancer, bro. Everybody I ever saw talk about Jesse Lee Ward, the people who were like, you know, actively covering Jesse Lee Ward every week on their on their shows. Nobody was ever being like, haha, LOL, she has cancer. Not one fucking person did that. Now on the other hand, Dom, you, when you released your video after Jesse Lee Ward died, you literally said, and I hope you still have that video up so that you don't, uh, again, try to, you know, partake in some revisionist history. You yourself literally said, and we watched it on stream. So maybe I have a stream up where I reacted to you saying this. I think I do actually. The thumbnail is you and Jesse Lee Ward and, uh, I remember this actually. You literally said, Dominic, that you hope everyone who ever talked about Jesse Lee Ward gets cancer and worse. Nobody ever, no anti MLM person ever said that, bro. It's so it's crazy how this man is able to like grandstand while also simultaneously being a worse, like a bigger piece of shit than everybody else. <laughs> LOL, the chat, Dom, you are a 60 year old intel. Um, you know, was Marco wrong? Yeah, nobody ever attacked Jesse Lee Ward's cancer. See, I don't even need to read the chat to validate what I'm saying. I know this shit. Insane. Thank you, Aaron. Peace out. Uh, not one, not one person, bro. Uh, it's crazy. He's the good cop and the bad cop. You know, in the Lego movie, Good Cop, Bad Cop, the Liam Neeson character, where he's like, friends and then his head spins around he's like i'm going to find you i love that character that's dominic i love dominic i think i missed a donation uh and let me check it because i don't have the alerts on the screen share screen because i'm focused on the whoopty whoop uh new fan nope i didn't miss shit which is strange because i should be missing it with all the bags that are flying i should be missing some right come on where's the thing let me see if that works the link in the chat so don't link in the chat. Yay, it worked. Yay, thumbs up the stream. Let me refresh it. There better be. Wow, 250 people watching, only 190 likes. Hmm. Always Marco scamming his audience for thumbs ups. Here we go. But if you're going to say that all oh, they're trying to silence me because they say I'm a hater, that's that's not trying to silence you. That's putting an opinion out. So this is karma. You guys all attacked all the MLM people out there. You make your content about them nonstop. Whatever you get, fucking it's good. I'm glad you're getting something in return strategy they use which okay. you wouldn't have seen just from watching my videos is suing content creators for defamation simply for publishing the truth in many cases keep in mind anybody could sue anything for anybody for anything at all so that's nothing new cases nothing new doesn't make it right it's still cult information control but all good the threat of legal action or actual legal action can cause a content creator to either willingly or unwillingly remove the videos and if that happens the mlm in question will use that as proof that i was wrong when that's not the case at all if you followed me for even the how isn't it the case at all? If something got removed, literally, it, it, what's, what, is the, what is the purposes removed for? Co like the only thing, the only thing I think something you get removed for is like copyright uh, infringement. Like I tried to do a uh, a video response to uh, uh, some anti MLM creator, or it was, it, was a, it was a show, actually, a legitimate show that was on Comedy Central, excuse me. And because it was Comedy Central's content, I couldn't put it out there, right? So, if something was removed, it was copyright infringement, right? Maybe you you held the video camera and it captured a bunch of their stuff. Maybe that's it. But don't act like it was be, it was removed for anything other than that, because outside of it, your your argument's not gonna hold water. Pass. I want to mention. I want to actually address this too. There, I don't know how it works in the United States, but in Canada, it's actually frighteningly easy to have somebody's content removed, even if they didn't perpetrate copyright infringement or trademark infringement or say anything defamatory in Canada you can apply for emergency injunctions which are supposed to be temporary 
they're basically uh, an individual or a company can go to a judge and say, look, this thing came out about me. It's defamatory. It's hurting my business or my reputation or et cetera, et cetera. We need you to issue an emergency injunction. We don't have time to do all the procedural stuff of going to trial and determining the merits of who's right and who's wrong and what the truth is because damage is being done as we speak. We need you to just side with us for the, for the time being and then the burden will be on the person who's receiving the lawsuit to come back to court at a later date and prove that they weren't uh, you know, copyright infringing or defaming or whatever. So now the burden falls onto the shoulders of the person being sued. The judge makes this decision on what's called a balance of conveniences. What is the inconvenience to the company or the individual who is claiming the bad thing that's happening to them versus what is the inconvenience that will be dealt to the person who is allegedly perpetrating the defamation or the copyright infringement? In most cases, you can already see how this is going to go. The judge is going to go, okay, well, if the content creator or whoever, the defendant, if they aren't actually doing anything wrong, then this is going to be less of an inconvenience to them that their video or their publication is temporarily removed. But if it actually is doing some harm unjustly to the plaintiff, that's obviously going to be very inconvenient to them. So it's a balance of conveniences. So the judge is basically saying, okay, in lieu of having all the facts, in lieu of us sitting here and actually arguing it back and forth, I'm going to make a temporary decision to sign a temporary injunction that is in favor of the person who's making the complaint, the plaintiff. After that, the person who made the claim, the plaintiff, can then engage in these legal maneuverings to delay and delay and delay and delay so that this temporary injunction actually ends up being temporary perpetually until the person who received it is able to get the money to hire a lawyer, get all the evidence, go back and forth with the plaintiff's lawyer, get court dates, do depositions, find a trial date, and on and on and on or until they're, willing, uh, until they're able to find a lawyer who's willing to take the matter on contingency or get paid after the fact or whatever it is. That's the, that's the full explanation of how this can happen where you don't actually have to do anything wrong uh, to have some action taken against you. The judge in Canada can basically, and does, and this has happened to me now multiple times, can temporarily take the side of the person making the complaint on a balance of conveniences. How do they do this? Well, the companies that sue me, they go into uh, court with the biggest sob story. They cherry pick the most uh, incendiary things that I said that might have not even, you know, the tone when a lawyer is repeating what somebody said is not the same tone as when I said it. Maybe I was on a live stream joking around being like, this motherfucker is crazy. And when the lawyer says to the judge, They'll say it like this, uh, your honor, Mr. McIver said, this motherfucker is crazy. They're making it sound like I was on some, you know what I mean? They're making it sound worse than it is. So they prepare their sob story and they go to the judge and they just throw shit out there. Your honor, we estimate that the damage caused by these videos is in excess of $10 million worth of damage. And we need you to, they just fucking make it up. They just make it up. So um, that's the answer. That's how it happens. Um, it's unfortunate. And uh, again, it's the Canadian legal system is not friendly. Uh, Jose Cabuco, thank you for the $20 dono. Really appreciate that. And Richard A. as well. Thank you so much. Man says, we're no strangers to love. You know the rules. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I forget how the melody goes, but thank you, Richard, for the Rick Roll. Don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Susie says, literal textbook victim blaming. If you were treated that way, you deserved it. Woohoo! 
Oh, it's actually so concerning that Dominic was a police officer, you know? Remember the one video where Dominic was like, I can't tell you how many times when I was a police officer, I pulled up to the house where there was a, some domestic dispute going on and I could tell that the girl had just pulled all her hair out and scratched her own face. You know? Insane. I feel like me and Dominic would be friends though. Despite all this, you know, he still has this underlying thing of like, Marco's not a bad guy. And bro, I really feel like we would go, like me and him could go to the gym together and catch like a crazy lift. Like I can, I can literally see myself spotting Dominic being like, one more, you got it. <laughs> Maybe I'm just too friendly for my own good. I just get along with everybody as like a character, you know, defect. But man, me and Dominic would honestly bro down, go get some Mexican food after, quesadilla, have a like, Dominic drinking one of those, what are those called? A bulldog or whatever it's called with the beer upside down in the shit. I'm drinking a little coconut or mango or strawberry daiquiri. Like, come on, bro. It could all be so simple. It could all be so simple. All right. Uh, let me see in the Discord. Don't post it in the Discord. We got to see. We've got to see. Let me see. Uh... Here we go. I'm not seeing it. Is it here? Uh, Wilson got the cult member t-shirt in the Discord. Make sure y'all go scoop that. AlwaysMarcoMerch.com. I have some new merch coming as well. Um, it's very sick. I can't wait to show you. I'm Y'all miss Scott and Peter? Don't worry, they'll be back. Spotting him while he benches the 10-pound rubber bumper plates so they look heavier. Y'all hilarious. All right. All right, peace out, Odwin. Let's, let's, uh, here, let's continue with this nonsense. 10 months, you've seen this happen multiple times already where a new video magically and mysteriously has disappeared overnight. Once. And I'm still not able to talk about those situations because now it's a legal process which takes time. The first time that I faced legal action associated with my work here on YouTube was in 2021. And the stress of that situation led to me taking an almost year long hiatus throughout 2022. Wait, wait a second. Hang on. Go. Do you want people to feel sorry for you? Or is this your generation? So because somebody sent you a cease and desist letter, you felt so much stress, you had to- It wasn't a cease and desist letter. Pull off of YouTube? You're, this is tough guy. Tough guy Marco, who can go and do online debates, who can be a completely different person off camera, who can send men he doesn't know, fat boy incel on TRT. Bro, you're old enough to be my dad. And I sent you that message after you were like goading me to respond to you on Instagram and after you had already made like an hour long response to one of my YouTube videos. Bro, what are you talking about? But when you got some legal action, you were so sensitive. You had the stress. You had to pull off for a year, year and a half. Are you, okay, this is more proof why your, your side, your anti MLM side, they shouldn't be involved with network marketing. Okay, yeah. So this is another thing that we, we all expected it, right? Dominic just loves to say that we're just soft. Your generation, your side of the argument, you guys are just soft. So it wasn't just the stress of the lawsuit itself. The stress of being sued when I know I had done nothing wrong. On top of that, having to spend in excess of $10,000 to hire a lawyer who didn't actually fucking do anything for me and in my opinion was a complete crook. And at the same time, having my Instagram on a almost daily basis over the course of like a month receiving like these, I would wake up and have a thousand new followers and all of them were bots. And I would have to like make my account private and manually go through and block all of the bots because they were just trying to like drown my engagement, having my Instagram hacked and taken down, DMs being sent to relatives of mine. Like it wasn't just the lawsuit. The battle that I was in at that time was the umbrella and underneath that umbrella was many different things that culminated in stress. And also, yeah, I was younger, I was 23, 24, and it was the first time that I'd ever had anything like that happen. And the magnitude of it felt like, you know, it, it's, it was a scary thing to deal with the first time. I'll be honest about that. It's not no tough guy, whatever. It, the, the sting of that softened as time went on, and I, I look at it less seriously now, but it's just like anything you do for the first time that you're scared of you know when you're a kid and you're scared to jump off the high diving board and then you do it once and it just gets easier after that it was like that so 
yeah, you know, I, that situation obviously ended up making me much stronger, even though, uh, you know, it led to that hiccup where I didn't post anti MLM content for like almost a year. But, uh, but I'm always wrong. Dominic's always right. I'm soft. He's tough. I'm weak, he's strong, on and on and on. Because you guys can't fucking handle stress. You're a bunch of big babies. Because <laughs> I thought, do I really want to be spending my 20s dealing with just nonsensical lawsuits that are going to- If you believe in your, if you believe in it, yeah, you should. Spirit. I should have known Dominic would take that stance that I should just suffer through it because this is the same guy who claimed that he burned his boats on MLM. And during our private conversation before we did the debate, he told me that he has in his mind a benchmark, a, a time frame, if you will, of the age he has to be and the amount of money he has to have in order for him to go, okay, MLM was worth it and not quit or even consider quitting. And I felt really, really bad in that moment. I didn't say anything because I could tell how serious he was about it. But like he told me that if he's, if he doesn't have basically a million dollars in the bank by the time he's 60 years old, he's, he'll admit that it, it, I'll have to go and pull up the, I recorded that call. So I'll have to go pull that up and review what the exact thing that he said was, but it was something like that. It was like, if I'm 60 and I don't have a million dollars or something around there, then I'll admit that it, that it didn't work. And I'm like, damn, bro. In my mind, I just, it's like, I know he's just going to waste his time and then he'll be 60 years old and have nothing. And that's, I, I unlike when Dominic says it, I actually mean, when I say this, I actually don't wish that on anybody that's sad and if you've been see there's a difference see you don't believe in something you fold if you know my story i went up against police department corruption got fired that was what they had they had to say it's dirt to fire me on right and i said no you're not going to fire me on this so i fought it because it was bullshit took three years three years marco i lost everything but i was fully reinstated and vindicated at the end because i what is that true dominic because when i googled your lawsuit against the police department it said that you got fired because you were like taking photos of dead bodies on the on the job and like sending them to your boys on Snapchat. Maybe that's fake news. I don't know. That's just what I read. I believed in it. You want to talk about stress? That stress. I didn't go away either. I up my ante. I ran for sheriff. I went 10 times harder at it. So when you believe in something, you don't fucking cower away like a pussy. You keep fighting. If you truly believe the MLM industry is such a bad place that you want to eradicate, why are you quitting? Why do you have such a big voice? Why are you quitting? Because you know you're the scam artist. You okay, well, this is also in the past and I'm I obviously didn't permanently quit. So how are we still sticking to this? I'm just soft narrative. Okay. Okay. Because I'm a scammer. I had more money to make. I had more scams to perpetuate. So I came back 2023. Let's get them bags. Stream has link in the chat. You're the one who's being exposed and you're not, you're not getting, probably not getting paid anymore for the shit that you were doing. That's probably the number one reason. LOL. I love every episode about me that Scott and Peter or Dominic Izzo do about me. It's always like, you know, this is like a running joke with Scott and Peter is that They've been saying for like a couple of years now that within one year, I'll be homeless, working at McDonald's, living in a box, etc. And every year, every year, what happens? We keep going up. Where's the one? We keep going up. Almost at 90K. Rock with you, boy. All right, let's continue following me for a couple of years, you might even remember me saying that I was never going to do anti MLM content again. But over the course of 2022, I started to come around primarily because the messages and comments from people who truly needed help in understanding what MLMs were and how they operated never stopped every single day in 2022. And instead of helping the industry, all you did, all you did was make fun of people and you attack their shit. That's it. I don't want to help the industry. LOL. You could have come to me and said, hey, listen, this industry sucks. If you if you, you know from day one, I have sided with a lot of what you guys said, but instead you tried to make it one big gotcha on the on the debate we did. You attacked me, fat boy incel, you laughed. That was before the debate. It's you who started cutting clips out of context after the debate and posting them like with clickbait titles being like, anti MLM or gets destroyed. And you constantly use that clip. You've reposted that clip over the past year on different platforms and shit. So what are you talking about? It's about it. You don't take it seriously. This is either your generation or you're still immature. I think you're in your mid twenties. You got a long way to go before you mature. But again, this is me, 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 me. 
you got your PP smapped and whatever, whatever happened, right? Whatever, whatever paperwork came down that you got. My mini inch winky. That's shutting you up. I mean, if it's got you running scared, it's because you don't believe enough in what you're doing. That's for you to back off for all this simply believes, simply says you don't believe in what you're doing. Do I? <laughs> this guy, I, I love when he gets that smug little smile where it's like Dominic A and Dominic B, like the multiple personalities in his own mind, where Dominic A is like smirking to Dominic B being like, yeah, what you just riffed about and freestyled off the top of your head actually did sound somewhat sensible there. And he's like, please, even though it's like deep, deep, deep down, he knows what he's saying is complete horseshit, but he like has a little giddy moment of glee when he thinks it sounds like he delivered it in a way that was like somewhat digestible. <laughs> he's like tapping on the microphone. He's like, uh, yeah, you guys do that all the time. <laughs> Dominic. So funny. Um, my mini inch winky. I'm unsubbing Marco. You're a liar. You lied about going overseas. It's just a big ass green screen behind you. So true. Yeah. Gets caught taking pics of dead bodies, runs for sheriff. So funny. Dominic at 60. Winners never quit. Yeah. Uh, what was the thing I was going to pull up? Oh, yes. Dominic also, I, I, I would be remiss if I didn't include these. Um, Dominic also put in the comments, so he commented, the video he's reacting to right now called I'm Leaving Canada, which is my video. He commented on my video and his comment said this, odd how you're the only one this is happening to. Not Julie Joe, Aaron, Cece, or anyone else. Doesn't pass the smell test, but you're good at scamming people yourself. So he left that comment. And then he made this video uh, reacting to, to my video. I will actually give you the courtesy of responding to that, Dominic. Dominic says, it's funny how this is happening only to you and not anybody else. And that's why he thinks it's suspicious. Hey, Dominic, I'm also the only one of those people you mentioned that make videos that go stupid dummy viral and get almost a million views in a week. I'm also the only one of those people that you mentioned who makes these in-person type of hidden camera investigations on MLM that get hundreds of thousands of views. I'm also the only person and on and on we go. I mean, if no disrespect to anybody else, but if those people were causing enough headache to the MLM companies they talk about, they would be getting those, uh, you know, legal problems too. So it's a compliment to me that you say, this is happening only to you and nobody else. Yeah, because I fucking go stupid dummy crazy with it and I body shit. <laughs> um, so I wanted to respond to that one. And then he also posted a clip. Uh, he cut a clip from his reaction video and posted on Instagram. And the caption on Instagram said, this generation has no fight in them. Anti-MLM content creator Always Marco says he took an entire year off of posting on YouTube because of the stress of criticism. It's crazy how on YouTube, I'm uh, Dominic's like biggest clickbait, but on uh, Instagram, when he talks about anti-MLM, on his Instagram or MLM in general, it, it gets the least engagement. Like that post, I think, had like 17 likes and he has like 60,000 followers. He only eats on Instagram when he's talking about like, COVID or political nonsense or conspiracy theories, but even, which is, I mean, this, I sort of take, find joy in this, that even Dominic's own audience that follow him willingly on Instagram, who like what he has to say about like politics and whatever else, even they don't engage when he tries to talk about how great multi-level marketing is. Even the most like right-wing conspiracy theory people who follow Dominic Izzo for you know, their own pleasure are like, yeah, no, Dominic, we're not rocking with this. Even your own core base is not with you on the MLM shit. It's cr everyone is laughing at you, bro. Come on, come to the light side. You can be on my show. We could have a, we could have like a little co, you know, thing going on. Father, son type shit. Come on, bro. It'd be perfect. You're the old white guy with the white hair and beard. I'm the young brown guy with the dark hair and beard. I mean, it's a perfect we're a perfect yin and yang, Dominic. Come on. Come on. Join me. And together we will rule the galaxy type shit.
I got at least one new person reaching out to me, either on Instagram, DM, email, YouTube comments. And that was a donator. Own horror one more money. About how their best friend, relative, right. spouse, etc., had joined some multi-level marketing opportunity and become completely brainwashed by the cult that is MLM. This is a variation of my own story. This is why I started making this content in the first place. Back in 2015, my own best friend from high school had joined World Financial Group and invited me to a meeting. And the person that I saw at that meeting was not the best friend I had known for the previous four years. He was absolutely brainwashed. So I came back to post anti-MLM content exclusively on this channel. But as my channel has grown over the last year and the amount of information I've published about MLMs has increased, the measures they have taken to fight back have also increased. Documentaries about cults will often show how they will harass and stalk and sue and threaten and spread rumors about former members. Isn't that all the shit that you did? What? Wait a second. How many harassing, you, you harassed me in my DMs, how stalking. I harassed you in your DMs? Bro, you kept blowing me up for a interview after you made a response video to me during a time when I wasn't even making videos about MLM. I sent you the one message and then I blocked you. And it wasn't until like however many months later when I came back to doing it and I realized that, there, that I could make content out of making an example out of you that I came back. How, what are you actually talking about? How many events did you go to with a hidden camera? Rumors. It's crazy how after Dominic Izzo's mom passed away, and this was after the debate, I sent him a message like, hey man, condolences for your, about your mom. I heard about your mom passing. And he, and this is after he already unfollowed me and he never responded to it. And then fast forward a few months later, I haven't talked to him in so long. And he's back posting, like I'm getting new DMs, like Dominic Izzo tagged you in a post. This generation is soft. It's like, damn bro. At some point, you just become a bad person, you know? At some point, there's not even, like, a spin you can put on it or an angle you can, like, present, you know? On a basic human decency and human respect level, you're just, you lie, you manipulate, you gaslight, you victim blame, you string these false equivalencies and nonsense analogies together, you make up shit just completely, like, out of thin air. It's actually crazy, bro. And yet when someone actually tries to have a, a genuine, real human uh, moment with you and say, hey man, fuck all this internet shit. Sorry to hear about your mom passing. It, it doesn't get any attention from you. And yet you claim that everybody else who doesn't agree with you is the one, are, are the ones who are clickbaiting and scamming and you know playing up sympathy to make money and all this shit. It's fucking crazy. How did I even know about your mom passing away? Because you, as soon as it happened, you're posting on Instagram nonstop, which fair play, you know, some people, people grieve in different ways, but it's like, not only is the shit that you say about others in anti MLM completely made up most of the time and not true, but the things that you do claim, you yourself do. It's like the biggest projection. It's so crazy. It's so, cr literally, I think Dominic Izzo might be more insane than Scott and Peter. And that's truly, truly saying something. Because we've seen how much of that uh, nonsense over the past couple of years. You know? His generation must be soft if he considers one message to be harassment, right? Wow. It's crazy. It's actually crazy. Go back and look at your content. All you did was conjecture talking about Jesse Lee Ward and everyone else. All did I did I stalk people and send private investigators to people's houses and send private investigators to find the family members' houses of that person and send them there looking for that person, trying to serve them lawsuits and wait for them outside their gym with video cameras, running up to their car and on and tailing them, driving around, following them, getting people's Instagrams taken down. All the things that I deal with or have dealt with I've not done any of that to anyone. That's all the gossip uh, Coffee Clutch does. Julie Joe, Aaron Bees, who's a documented liar and fraud uh, fraud scammer too as well. well. That's all you guys do. So if this bit you in the ass, it's about fucking time. Did those former cult members do anything wrong? Of course not. In fact, they're doing the opposite. They're doing good, helping people by telling their stories so that other people who might not have known about the cult don't get taken advantage of. Now, my lawyer keeps reminding me of this. Oh, my the lawyer. process is the punishment. We're going to come back to that multiple times throughout this video. Cult Hello, like he's cooking. Oh, your lawyer. As soon as I mention my lawyer, he's like, oh, your lawyer. Like he's about to chef something up. 
Like, he, like it's a gotcha that I have a lawyer. <laughs> cults don't actually care about winning a lawsuit. Cults may not follow through on their threats to kill you and your family. What they are counting on is that you can only take so much. I'm sorry. Marco getting death threats is hilarious. I, I, I ran for office out here in Chicago. I was a cop. The amount of threats and death threats I got is insane. I publicly endorse candidates that people are like, oh my God, uh, I, it doesn't matter. The, the fact that this kid, this kid has got death threats, I'm sorry. I find it actually extremely hilarious how much shit, the, how little pressure these people will break under. If anything. It even when, even when there is like a valid, even when I do have a valid thing that's like, yeah, I got death threats. Even then he like literally snorts laughing, being like, I got death threats too. Sorry. So get, so moral of the story, if something, if you claim something bad is happening to you, Dominic will most likely think you're lying. And if something actually bad is happening to you for real, Dominic still doesn't accept it because you're soft because the same thing and worse happened to him. So you should just puff your chest out and be a G about it. Sorry, there's no winning. It shows how they're not- Oh yeah, only Dominic is allowed to have death threats. I, I'm sorry, Dominic. I didn't mean to step on your toes, bro. My bad. Forget I said anything. It's suited for the pressure of sales. Network marketing is sales. They're just exposing themselves. They're weeding themselves out and it's great. Much before you snap. The process is the punishment. I'm gonna give you a real world example of how this happens. Let's pretend there's some hypothetical cult and let's pretend there's some hypothetical content creator who is making videos exposing the truth about this cult. First, <laughs> the cult will sue the- Hello, Mars says Dominic Izzo is the Keebler elf going through a TRT driven midlife crisis. I love Dominic, man. Come on. It's crazy how after all this, I still kind of like him, you know? The content creator claiming defamation and saying that their videos contain factual inaccuracies and that the content creator is just making these videos to try to get clout and money and whatever else. Which is what you do, buddy. Literally. You, it, the, I did a video on you just the other day. Or let's look at um, CC Suarez too, right? Where CC had claimed that an organization proved that 90-something percent of all MLMers don't make any money when the study done was from 1980 and only on 20,000 people from the state of Wisconsin. So just like her, what you usually do is you take a statement and you blanket that over everything in the industry for factual inaccuracy. I saw that video you're talking about, Dominic, and it was complete fucking nonsense and you know it. It almost doesn't even deserve me responding to it. But you know damn well that that study is one of countless studies that confirm the same thing, that confirms the 99% loss rate. If the 1980 study from Wisconsin isn't enough for you, maybe the 2011 John Taylor study, which is literally embedded on the FTC's website, which has a list of over 100 MLM companies that had their compensation plans examined. All of those companies were determined to be consistent with the 99% loss rate. And that was in 2011. And that site is still up there today. The, the FTC's webpage on MLMs and pyramid schemes is still updated today in 2024. And rem that article, that study, the John Taylor study, remains embedded even 13 years later. So I don't know. It's still it, it is still the benchmark of the accurate numbers on MLM. So if they have so, don't forget too. There's two sides on this, right? If they can sue you, they're going to, and anybody could sue anybody for anything. If the lawsuit has no merit, it will be thrown out. So to be honest. Yeah, but it doesn't happen overnight, my brother. It takes time. Why are you not getting a ton of donations? Do you have a PayPal set up yep. from your loyal following? Uh, yep, yep. Streamlabs link in the chat. I don't know if it's at the end of this. We'll leave it up. If you believe in helping Marco out for his legal fees, you should. But if you really have belief on what you're doing, stand by your convictions. Grow a pair. If, you, if you're this stressed out over a lawsuit, man, you've it's clearly your first rodeo. The content creator now has a limited time from the moment that lawsuit is initiated to first find a lawyer, then pay their retainer fee or negotiate some other arrangement. Then the content creator has to familiarize both themselves and their lawyer with the claims that the cult is making and determine the validity or lack thereof of what the cult is saying they did. Looking up the specific you know, rule five subsection B of the law to see what it says about what the cult is claiming you did. Finding. Wait a second. <laughs> you mean there's repercussions for shit too? And there's laws and there's, so was it? Uh, 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 crap. I'm not going to remember what this damn word is fleeting in my head. There's standards that have been set already? Man, you should have kind of thought about all this before you went off forming your opinion videos and passing them along as fact. You could do commentary. You could do commentary. That's your opinion. But when you present it as fact, which it's not, that's the problem. And you know what? This is probably a very valuable... Yeah. 
Well, it is a fact that 99% of people in MLM lose money, and it is a fact that they are cults. I don't know what you want me to say. Costly lesson for you, but you might need this. All of the exceptions to that rule, looking up related case law that supports their side of the case, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Already, you can see how even this initial first step of just receiving a- Yes, I have found a gym in my area, Mars. Don't be fooled. I'm, I've been wearing very loose, light material clothing while I've been here because it's very hot where I am. So I've been wearing like uh, a larger size shirt than I would normally wear back home. So if you think that, if you think that I haven't been still getting it in out here, it, it's just an optical illusion from me wearing a larger size shirt now lawsuit would significantly eat into the time that a content creator would spend researching, scripting, filming, editing, publishing more content that would help more people. And this is exactly what the cult. Oh, you poor baby. Wait a second. You poor baby. Now we're supposed to feel sorry for you because you can't work because of life. Uh, if anything, you're a, you're a child and you're showing that you can't multitask shit. And if that was your job, man, you, if you spent a year and that was your primary income making commentary videos on an industry that you were never involved in and you acted like you were the expert on it, this, it's all consequences or, or, or all actions have consequences, right? You, you, you went at it. Great. And now that you get some backlash, you back down like a coward. So if I were you, how am I backing down? This whole video is about how I'm not going to back. And anyways, we'll get to it. You dude, I would, I would double down and maybe you, maybe you watch this or whatnot. Hopefully you do. If I were you and you truly believe in what you're doing, fucking go at it harder. I have told you this off camera as well to what you were doing had validity in a lot of ways. And I would have been a great ally with you because the industry needs to be fucking cleaned up. There are so many shysters out there and I would have loved, I even told that to Julie Joe when I first said, hey, I'll talk to you online. See You're not, the, the problem is Dominic, is you take this like condescending stance where you're like, everyone else is a kid. It's like same shit sort of that Scott Johnson does. When Scott Johnson first reached out to me, you have no idea who I am and the amount of respect you should have for me. It's like, y'all are not genuine. Y'all are just people with whack flop YouTube channels or radio shows and you're coming at, you know, us, the people who are actually getting views and building an audience and making money and whatever, acting like we need you, acting like, oh yeah, I'll do a, I'll do a thing with you and I could be your ally and we can have you on my radio show. It's like, motherfucker, you need me. If I needed you, if I saw some benefit, wouldn't I have already hit you up? Wouldn't I be the one DMing you? Any person that Dominic has ever mentioned, me, Julie, Cece, whoever he mentions, he always made the first contact and kept following up and kept following up and made another video and made another video and did the same thing Scott Johnson did when he didn't get the response he wanted or when he got no response at all, he went on the attack and started making videos being like, this person's soft, this person's mentally ill, this person's fat, this person's this, this person's that. It's like, it's crazy how you can, uh, it's like the, uh, you know that meme that I saw this meme that was like Schrodinger, Schrodinger's douchebag where you say, you just go around saying offensive things and then if anyone gets offended, you say, I was just kidding. But you only say, I was just kidding if someone gets offended. Otherwise, you let it roll. That's basically what y'all are doing. It's like you're putting this, extending the olive branch to be like, hey, I like what you're doing. Come on. You're saying things that are valid in a lot of ways. Let's do something together. Blah, 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 blah. And then when you don't get the uh, response that you want, you immediately go like, I tried. I tried to help him. I tried to help this kid, always Marco. He's a kid. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's soft. He's immature. It's like, dude, you need me. I would have never made a video about you or whatever, which I guess is your whole MO. I mean, I wasn't trying to do nothing with you because you have nothing of value to offer me except for me continuing to give you this attention and give you this spotlight and this clout as my channel continues to grow. I'm, my channel is twice as big now as it was when we did the debate almost a year ago. And, uh, you know, this is, this is now your roundabout way of getting what you wanted from me, which is continuing to make videos about me so that I continue to respond so that you continue to get eyeballs on you. And Hey, uh, to Dominic's credit, he's gone up in subscribers. I think last year he had 500 subscribers. Now he has 810. I mean, bro, a couple more years of this, we might get monetized, Dominic. A couple more years, you might be monetized on YouTube. Who knows? Um, so yeah, it's amazing. It's truly amazing. Oh yeah, that's another thing too. You said in the, in his comment, he said, how come this isn't happening to Julian, whoever else? Uh, 
another thing I do that they don't do is give you any fucking attention as well. So CC Suarez, all of you, but now you're seeing that your whole platform is just being opinionated about something that you have a personality problem with that it emotionally hurt you. Be a fucking Dominic talks about the debate like it was his prom. So funny. <laughs> and grown up, be a man if you want to take on people and say, all right, I'm staying in this fight till the end. But you don't have that side of you in you yet. Maybe when you're in your 30s or 40s, but you don't have it yet. Wants. The process okay. is the punishment, but that's not all. The cult can then have their lawyers start sending inconsequential emails and letters one after the other to the lawyer of the content creator. What is the point of this? Well, if you've ever worked with a lawyer before, you know that most lawyers charge hourly for their time. Yep. So every time that the cult's lawyer sends an email to the content creator's lawyer, content creator's lawyer then has to call their client and say, hey, content creator, uh, you know, the cult sent me another letter. It's saying- I like how he, Jolene says, I like how he stopped himself in time just to avoid pointing out working for a year with an inadequate or non-existent conversation, right? This, this, and this. That might be 30 minutes of billable time. That could be an hour of billable time. Hundreds of dollars. Who the lawyer is and how they're doing their books and whatever. And lawyers are not cheap. So for this 30 minutes or one hour. Can you guys not see this through this yet? This is a grift. Do you guys don't see this yet? What? Mar uh, I, unless Marco puts up and says, this is who I'm being sued by and I need financially. If you guys start donating to him for this, he's got you again. Well, unfortunately, like I mentioned before with the emergency injunctions in Canada, part of those emergency injunctions there can be clauses in those emergency injunctions that say not only will they, the people suing demand that you remove whatever the content is in question, they can also include a thing that says you're not allowed to talk about the specifics of, the, of this case because that would then be continuing to pour gas on the fire and cause us more harm. And so again, the judge will say on a balance of conveniences, hypothetically, the judge will say on a balance of conveniences, you need to... The plaintiff, you need to not talk about this, and it is on the burden is on you to come back to court at a later date, present your evidence, and we will compare and see if the injunction remains or goes away. That's just how it works. Sorry to sorry to give you the little crash course on Canadian the Canadian legal system, Dominic. I don't hold it against you because you're from the U.S., but that's the truth. Marco is grifting you for money. Just I don't know if you guys have figured this out one yet hour that could be three hundred dollars that could be five hundred dollars that could be a thousand dollars depending on who you're it's crazy the point of this video was not to uh get new patrons or donations which is why i didn't do a gofundme or whatever at the end of this video it was just for me to let y'all know why i would be away um for the short period i was where i wasn't streaming and to as specifically as i could without breaking the law tell you what i was dealing with and uh confirm that I wasn't going to let it stop me or, or make me fold. That was the point of the video. Your lawyer is, and mind you, nothing has really happened. The case has not developed significantly in one direction or the other from two emails ago. The only thing that has happened is your bill is getting beefed up with billable time for nonsense. Yeah. Again, the process- Nonsense, wait a second. This is nonsense, but all that you attacked was nonsense, dude. It's cause and effect. You poked the fucking bear, dude. You went up to the sleeping tiger and flicked its nuts to see what happens. This is consequences for your actions. Be a fucking man and accept it. We I do. What, what are you talking about? I do accept it. I do accept it. Of course, I know I'm going against the evil multi-billion dollar cult companies. Of course, I know that. Of course. Me exposing the pyramid schemes. Of course, I know there's going to be effect. But the effect doesn't mean that I did something wrong. Me being sued doesn't mean I did, did something wrong. Me having a video taken down doesn't mean I did something wrong. This is a consequence of going up against evil. Again, not to make the comparison, because uh, the magnitude is obviously different, a, a lot different. But any person, any great man in history who has tried to change the status quo faced these type of problems. And worse, fucking Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in a South African prison for opposing apartheid. That's the entirety of my life. I'm 27 years old now. That's like if I, from this moment, spent another equivalent of my entire life's span in a prison cell for opposing racism. Did he do anything wrong? Of course not, of course not. Um, it's just crazy. It's just crazy that he thinks that I'm not, the whole video is about me taking accountability and saying, this is what I'm deal with, dealing with, and I'm not gonna let it make me fold. It's crazy. Dominic's insane. We all have to, everyone does. I told you, you had a lot of potential in <laughs> the nuts of the tiger. Yeah, his little giggle when he thinks he's spitting bars, flicking nuts, yeah.
a lot of good ways. This is a valuable lesson you're going to learn. But what you did do that I have no respect for, that this is karma, is you attacked people personally. You really did. And to be honest, if Jesse Lee Ward was alive today, I'm going to tell you flat out, Aaron would be shit in her pants right now, and so would Julie, because she was in the process of doing something. So they got off. They got off so easy. They they skated. You? No, you're in the crosshairs of a company because you guys decided to keep doing this shit. But, hey, it's what you wanted to do. Yeah, but Dominic, to your own to your own point, you yourself say that if I believe in something, I should stand on business and double down and let my nuts hang and be a G and, you know, all this shit, right? Well, that's what I'm doing, even though you don't agree with it. According to you, you should still have a, you should still respect the fact that I am fighting this battle on my own, even though you disagree with the side that I'm on, you know? Is what the cult is counting on. They are counting on, hey, we're a multi-billion dollar, multi-million dollar pyramid scheme. This is just one individual content creator. They will tap out before we do because we have more money. On top of all that, the content creator's lawyer and the cult's lawyer are having phone calls and correspondences that their parties are not privy to. So you can see how the bill could get beefed up even more when this is happening. Lawyer A is- Well, I'm waiting for you to start crying that the whole legal system is a scam. Did you start doing that yet? Because before, stand-up comedy is a scam. The rap music industry is a scam. MLM's a scam. I'm waiting for you to hear about, they're here about due process. I only ever said MLM was a scam, but all good. And civil prosecution, uh, that's a scam too. I'm waiting for the punchline of this. I mean, the emergency injunction shit, which is a temporary injunction that can just be perpetually extended, is kind of a scam if you ask me, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna flick the nuts of the tiger by saying that saying to lawyer B, hey, I'm going to submit this thing, and then you file this, and in response, we'll send you a letter for that, and then I'm on vacation, so then we'll postpone it a month till the next date, and then we'll sit in here, and meanwhile, all of this is just beefing up both parties' respective bills. If either party runs out of money and taps out, the lawyers didn't lose anything. The lawyers can just agree to adjourn the matter indefinitely, and both of them will still be able to send a receipt. I'm waiting for his next channel, YouTube content channel, on how being a lawyer is a scam, and we need to eradicate the whole legal process right now. No, no, being the client, Dominic, you're not listening. I said, being the lawyer, you still get your money. The lawyers don't lose anything. The legal system for someone who is a independent, you know, representing themselves or someone who's not wealthy versus an evil corporation that's worth billions, uh, the, it is not a level playing field. That's going to be Marco's next, always Marco, law is a scam. That's going to be his next content because he got ass burned with this or rather an invoice to both of their clients and get paid for the time that they did put in. So it's very easy to see that this is not a uh, battle of right and wrong. Great, great uh, point, Nick the Booksmith. Welcome. Narcissists usually interpret the actions of others through their own lens on the world. They have ulterior motives, so everyone else must have them too. Yeah, that's... Uh, my aunt and I were talking about this a few months ago. There, there are these... Uh, how do I say this without revealing too much? We know, we know these two parents. My aunt and I know these two parents. They're family friends, okay? And these two parents, we have always, we have always like, you know, privately uh, talked about how we don't think they're good parents and how they uh, are narcissists. And one of the examples that my aunt brought up is one time they were they were visiting with these narcissistic parents that i'm mentioning here these family friends and my aunt had uh her daughters with her my my two nieces and they were toddlers at this time they were probably i don't know three and one or maybe five and three something like that and these these parents this, these family friends were saying um to my aunt you know when they come to you and they cry and they're asking you for this or that, don't listen to them because they're just trying to manipulate you. Talking about a, like a toddler, saying that a toddler, they were saying that a toddler is trying to manipulate their parent. Now, don't get me wrong. Kids, kids can manipulate. Kids can put on fake tears and whatever, whatever. But that's not what was happening. You know, that wasn't, that wasn't the situation. And I remember my aunt and I talking about this being like, how fucking crazy is it to literally your default observation about a toddler is that they're deceiving and manipulating you a child you know and uh it again it's we 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 surmised 
that the reason that these parents thought that is because that's what they would do, is because that's how they would have operated. They would have manipulated. When they are pleading with people for something, it's manipulation. And I've noticed that, I mean, everybody learns this lesson the hard way in their own life through through dating as well. But in uh, in relationships, you can learn this too. Like if somebody from the very jump in the relationship is so obsessed with the idea of the other person in the relationship cheating, I feel like this is a very uh, common and very popular thing to argue about in relationships. If one person in the relationship is just constantly obsessing over the idea of the other person cheating, that's such a red flag to me because it's like, if cheating, if the idea of cheating isn't even like within your wheelhouse of things that you might ever do, why would you be so obsessed about the other person maybe doing it? If you, if, if cheating was like such a foreign concept to you and you know you would never do it, then you would be absolutely stunned and shocked to find out how, that the other person cheated on you if they did. But for you to go around with this confirmation bias being like, I know he's cheating, I know he's cheating, or I know she's cheating, or I know she's cheating, and then you find something that you think confirms that, you're going to be like, aha, I knew it. It's like, what the fuck? To me, that's a red flag. Or like, uh, you know, even I said to you guys on the last stream, on the first stream back, I said like, relationships have started and ended since the time that I've been out here. Dude, in the, in the, in the month of December, I was laying low. I didn't do any streams. I was just doing all the things that I needed to do to prepare to come out here. And uh, halfway through the month, literally like December 15th, after being on the most zen, you know, on my own self-improvement streak of my life, girls out of nowhere start messaging me. Hey, are you in Edmonton? Hey, you should come here. Hey, it's like y'all could sense y'all could women could sense that I was that I was leaving. They could sense the level up was happening and they were trying to pin me down before before I went. So against my better judgment. I went and had coffee in December with this one girl who hit me up because she was a beautiful gal. What can I say? I'm still a human at the end of the day. And I start like getting to know this girl. And the very first day that I met her, the very first like date, if you will, that we had, I shouldn't even really say date because fast forward, not even a month or fast forward a month and she's already out of the picture. But, um, you know, the very first meeting we had, one of the red flags that stuck out to me was her saying completely unprompted, like, my biggest pet peeve is people being controlling. And then over the next two weeks of talking to her, like, for example, I was still talking to this girl for the first couple days uh, when I when I came out here. And mind you, there's a time difference, you know, for her, it's day for me, it's night and vice versa. So when I'm up active outside doing shit, she's asleep or whatever, I start getting texts from this girl who wasn't even my girlfriend, by the way, being like, you know, in 30 minute intervals, if I didn't respond, being like, boo, you're not responding to me. Or like, you didn't send me a picture of what you're doing today. It's like, and I thought back to the two weeks earlier where uh, she said to me, my biggest red flag is people being controlling. And it's like, from that moment, I knew I was like, this bitch is controlling. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for me, can't make this shit up. So, uh, long-winded way of making my point that I know I probably didn't need to include the personal anecdote, but fuck it. He reveals a little bit from time to time. So, uh, yeah. Never trust a toddler, for real. Yeah, it's complete projection. You know, I've always, you know, I learned this, uh, I learned this um, in my own life when it comes to the cheating thing. It's like, bro, I fucking... I wish a bitch would cheat on me because then I'm going to go, I'm going to go 10 times harder. I'm going to use the betrayal to just become the greatest human who has ever lived that she won't be able to escape. Somehow, some way my name will be on a bus or my picture will be on a bus or an advertisement or on the raid. Some, some way, somehow she won't be able to escape the greatness and she'll always be reminded of the, uh, of the fumble. I'm not gonna sit there and be like, let me see your phone. Weird, weirdo shit, bro. Um, Suzy says, narcissists struggle to understand the concept of doing something for altruistic reasons because their own framework is self-serving. Yep. I mean, I could give you all another story. 
I could give y'all another story, and guess what? I will. A couple of years ago, this is back in 2020, I had already uh I had already started live streaming on YouTube and was already making money from from YouTube live streaming. And one day, uh, a comedian friend of mine in Edmonton wanted to start live streaming on his own channel. I was like, awesome. I'll come by one afternoon, grab your laptop, grab your webcam, we'll download OBS, I'll set it up for you, show you how to do it, boom, boom, boom. Great. After, when I was walking out of his house uh, to go back home, I got a phone call from my dad. And my dad called me and was like, what are you doing? And I said to him, oh yeah, I explained what I just explained to you. Oh, I was helping my friend set up his stream. He wants to start live streaming. His first response, my dad's first response was, oh, well, you shouldn't help him because then he's going to start live streaming and he'll start making money and then he'll start stealing people away from you and then you're not going to make as much money. And it's like, whoa, what the? First of all, I mean, the absolute layers of insanity with that statement are countless. First of all, he is not me. The people who follow me don't follow him just because he's also live streaming. Millions of people on the, on the, in the world live stream on YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Also, he's probably going to be making content that's completely different than mine. So the worry also isn't there. And also, 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 even if that were to happen where my audience was like, oh, I fuck with this guy. Let me go watch him. Good competition. That means I have to go harder and make my shit better. And also, who gives a fuck? You know, this was just his mindset that for you to win, someone has to lose. And for someone else to win, you have to lose. It's just such a like uh, shitty way of looking at the world. Such a shitty, pessimistic, you know, lonely way of looking at the world that you think everyone is out to fuck you. And it's like, damn, bro. For me, if I was the one in the position where my friend was coming to help me get set up to learn how to live stream and whatever, my first thought would be, man, I really appreciate this. How can I make it up to this person in the future? Not secretly being like, yeah, how can I plot and steal? Like, what the fuck? Who thinks like that? It's absolute mad. Well, it goes to show you why I don't fucking talk to my dad regularly. But uh, yeah, it's just, it's just not a nice, just such a whack way of looking at the world. Um, Jared says, is that why our two-year-old can always get an apple and an orange juice out of me? Manipulative little shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah yeah it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy go on youtube and google it thank you and paz hilarious i've been ass burned my fair share suspects so true all right let me let me continue this thumbs up the ting by the way y'all let's we can get through this we're almost there Innocent versus guilty like it is in the movies when you start to understand how it really goes in real life you realize that it's more akin to wait you want us to see that the legal process is not just black and white and it's gray along with the same shit that you refused to afford with network marketing it's just black and white it's black and white it's a scam that's true you never wanted to look at the gray nuances in it right this is fucking brilliant i am so happy you're going through this a casino or a game of poker I'm so happy you're going through this. Also in the comments says, although we wouldn't want any of this to happen to anyone. Where the person who has the bigger stack of chips has the advantage. They can afford to take bigger risks that pressure the other person into folding, even if they had a worse hand because they have more money. In gambling, the house always wins. In lawsuits, the lawyers always win. So what should the oh, it's a scam. do? This seems like it's a, a scam. situation. Well, one way around this is to find a lawyer who is willing to take the case on a contingency basis where they only get paid if and when they win, at which point their bill is paid by the side who lost. So I want to back that up for a second. Hang on a second. Uh, let's play up. that. I want to play that side again. Here's the only way to win. Only get did Dominic really not watch this video before turning his camera on and publishing a full ass video about this? Like I am doing that right now. I just turned on Dominic's video and I'm reacting to it blind because I know already that everything he's going to say is nonsense because I know what I said in the initial video that he's reacting to. Uh, and I know all of that is true. So I have no worry, but like this guy is trying to debunk and expose me. And it really feels like he put no thought into this prior. This is crazy.
paid if and when they win, okay. at which point, they're, so what should the content creator do? This seems like a desperate situation. Well, one way around this is to find a lawyer who is willing to take the case on a contingency basis where they only get paid if and when they win, at which point their bill is paid by the side who lost. So I'm just wondering if that has, if that's, is that a scam? I mean, what lawyer in their right mind would do work and win and then get paid by their client, right? So what you're saying is, shit, you are validating and looking for, you want somebody who is going to do the work for free until they win and then get paid. Where have I heard that before? Shit, it's almost like direct sales where you don't get paid unless you do work. Oh, so he did say that in the video and he also put it in the comments. So he was re he really was fucking with this bar. And it gets paid off. Uh, and, and, and that's how you okay. end up making your money. Oh, I'm sorry, wait a second. But there's no recruiting when it comes down to lawyers on contingency unless they ask you for referrals for their business to keep going. This, might, Marco, may be the best fucking video you have ever done. That's the closest thing that Dominic has had to a logical argument in this entire video so far. But again, it is still a false equivalency. Lawyers do not have a 99% loss rate when taking cases on contingency. And every lawyer, the, the contingency cases are the exception. The general practice of business in the legal world is lawyers getting paid retainers, not taking cases pro bono or on contingency. Whereas in multi-level marketing, it's always the same. You're always paying upfront and then trying to recruit five who recruit five who recruit five, which by the way, I forgot to mention when we were reacting to Patrick's video earlier, the guy who said gip goop or whatever and started dancing. Um, he talked about the, how it's a it's a straw man argument when anti MLMers bring up the five who recruit five who recruit five whatever. He talked about how it's nonsense because it would never actually happen as a matter of like real world, you know, uh, probability because it would never happen. And this in this to them, and I've heard Scott and Peter echo this same thing. To them, that is proof that the endless chain argument is nonsense. They go, well, if the five by five by five can only be repeated 13 times before you run out of people, how come we haven't recruited the entire world yet? And another good one I heard is Jesus Christ has been recruiting for 2000 years and he still hasn't recruited everyone to Christianity yet. There's still Muslims and Buddhists and blah, 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 blah. Again, nonsense, false equivalencies. The fact that everyone in the world has not been recruited to MLM yet is proof that it doesn't work. Because if it did work and you could recruit five who recruit five who recruit five, which is what they say you have to do, and that would only take 13 cycles, we would already see everyone in it. So the thing that they are trying to hold up as proof is actually proof for the opposite argument. This is how deep into the self gaslighting and mindless brainwashing nonsense that these people are in oh yeah well how come the entire world hasn't been recruited yet gotcha exactly that's my fucking point that's my point if it's so simple that all i have to do is recruit five who recruit five who recruit five shouldn't the whole world already be in it and if every mlm company is using the same model of five who recruit five or three who recruit three or eight who recruit eight it also begs the question why would there ever need to be more than one mlm company if this is such a perfect plan and every MLM company uses the same plan, which we know they do, a variation of it, two who recruit two, five who recruit five, etc., why couldn't we all just be in one MLM company? Why does there need to be multiple MLM companies? Can't we all just, all of us just be in Amway? Can't we all just join Herbalife? So, it's crazy. These people are so lost in the sauce. Peace out, Mars. So lost in the sauce. I cannot believe you've done this. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's continue on here. Let's continue on. The cult who is suing them. This would mean that there's virtually zero financial burden on the content creator. This is great. Well, if that happens, the cult can just resort to one of their many other strategies, like spreading false rumors about you online social media profiles to try to get you banned, reporting your YouTube videos to try to get them taken down, Love it. hiring private investigators Love it. to follow you and film you and harass you in person, Love or just having current cult members who are happily, you know, willing to do it for free. All of Love, love, love. <laughs> Kiddo, you deserve all of this because it's everything. Love it, kiddo, you deserve all of this. Again, 
we would never want, although we wouldn't want any of this to happen to anyone, if it's true, Marco should protect himself with all the law available. But here I am saying it's true, and he says he loves it, and I deserve it. This guy is beefing with himself. You did. Karma is a bitch. All those things that I just mentioned and described are things that I have either dealt with before or am dealing with currently. Through the legal process, they have found my address, and I've had multiple instances of people showing up at my home looking for me. They have found the address of relatives of mine and gone to their houses looking for me. They have followed me and waited for me outside of my gym with video cameras. They have gone through my Instagram following to try to find other relatives of mine and send them horrible and threatening messages. It has reached the point of Scientology-level cult information control and harassment. That you deserve all of this. You deserve every out of this because it's what you did i did literally <laughs> when dominic look at this man's face look at this man's face this is actually so fucking concerning look at this man's face right here look at his face look at the glee look at the joy on this man's face at some point you just have to laugh at some point, I just have to laugh because there's no way that I can even reconcile the madness of this. He knows that what he's saying is not true. That is so categorically, objectively untrue. All of those things that I just said in the video, I never did any of that to anyone. And he's saying, you deserve all of that because that's what you did. And he not only said it and laughed about it, he then, re and recorded it, he then watched back the video that he recorded and still thought, you know what, I should publish this. There is no talking to these people. There is no talking to someone like Dominic. He is absolutely insane. He is absolutely mentally insane. For the amount he talks about other people having mental illness and shit, he is absolutely fucking insane. This guy is cackling like the Joker when I say that people in MLM have gone through my Instagram following to try to find relatives of mine to send them threats. He laughs and says that I deserve that. Why? Because I made videos trying to help people explaining why MLM is a scam. And as though my channel getting views and growing wasn't proof of that. The thousands of comments across all my videos and social media saying, you're doing God's work, thank you for this. I got my friend out because of this video or I was gonna go to a World Financial Group meeting and now I'm not gonna do it anymore because I saw your video, thank you so much. Like, and then on the other end of that, Dominic having basically no exposure to, you know, no views, no subscribers, you know, channel with less than a thousand subscribers, which to add to how sad this shit is, this man's not even making money off this. Like, he's released two videos about me in the last two months, one an hour and a half long, this one 35 minutes long, and his channel isn't even monetized. Like, he doesn't even meet the threshold, like, requirement to, of a thousand subscribers to be, to get monetized. And even if he was monetized, would he be earning a hundred dollars in ad revenue, which is the minimum you need to get paid out. And even if he was earning $100, it's like, what the fuck are you gonna do with $100? It's like, understand, this man is driven purely just by madness. Nobody's watching this except us, okay? Nobody's subscribing to it. Absolutely fucking insane. Completely fucking insane. Yeah. Dom is like, my roommate is an asshole. You live alone. Hilarious. What up, Rachel? What up, Tretino? You know. Guess you can't shame the shameless or reason with the unreasonable. Yeah, so true. It's what you did. This is great. That is what I am dealing with right now. All of this <laughs> to intimidate me and get me to fold. The process and you are. is the punishment. I've done nothing wrong. I know. LOL. And you are, as I'm about to say, that I'm not going to fold. It's so uh, poetic. Somebody dropped this comment that says, uh, somebody drops this comment that says, watch the video first, then do the reaction. Every invalid point you made gets answered after you speak. Literally. Exactly. There you go. This guy says, I'm, I'm not blindly believing Marco. I'm not pro or an, an anti-MLM. 
but unlike you, I have the ability to process information and not just blindly follow one side. Exactly. Oh, that I am doing good in the world and that I am speaking the truth. What they want is for me to be stressing and losing sleep. You are. Looking over my shoulder. We can Actually, see you've lost weight. The bag around the, the darkness around your eyes and the, the, the. I've lost weight. What do you mean? I weigh more now than I literally ever have in my life. I was 145 pounds in 2019. I'm now 170. The sadness in your eyes? The bags around my eyes. That could have just been from bad lighting. A couple people said that I look tired too. I thought I fucking looked good in that video, but uh, and now here, look, it's it's morning. I'm out here in the sunshine. It's hot where I'm at. I'm having the fucking time of my life out here, to be honest. This is really messing you up. It really is. And laying in bed at night, thinking I heard someone breaking in, and it was just one of those inexplicable. I mean, actually, now that I mention, now that he mentions bags under my eyes, you can actually tell from looking at this video that the supposed bags around my eyes are actually just from the overhead lights casting a shadow like my from my forehead or I guess my eyebrows down onto my eyes because the lighting is completely overhead. The sounds that a building or a house makes at night. They want me to be so consumed with this. Like look underneath my chin, how the shadow is cast onto my neck. It's the exact same thing with my eyebrows and my eyes. I, <laughs> I don't have bags. That I decide it's not worth it and I just give up, fade into obscurity or end my own life, which I would never do. And I know based <laughs> on the title of this video, the MLMs are going Oh to my God, fucking imagine offing yourself because you're an anti MLM creator who feels the pressure from companies that sell makeup and skincare. Oh, that's beautiful. Dude, if I actually died or killed myself, you already know Dominic's entire channel would just be like, I would be in every thumbnail. He would be talking about me every day. It'd be so shameless thinking that I'm going into hiding or they've ran me out of the country or something like that because I'm scared. But this is one scenario where it actually is like it is in the movies. Think no, of it's not. most action movies no, or superhero not. movies. If, if he 100%. 100%. If Marco says he's leaving the country, what he's doing is his money ran out. I will, want, I will fucking 100% wager everything on this. The fact that he probably had roommates wherever he's at in Canada. I didn't have roommates. He wasn't making the amount of money he was making before made more money in 2023 than I've ever made in any year of my life ever. Or on YouTube, he probably dedicated all of his time to YouTube because he saw the income that was coming in because you guys donated for a good six months. So hold on, listen to this man. He probably wasn't making any money. And also in the next sentence says that that's how I was making money. Listen, he wasn't making the amount of money he was making before. He wasn't making the amount of money he was making before. Go on. On YouTube, he probably dedicated all of his time to YouTube. He dedicated all his time to YouTube because he saw the income that was coming. Because he saw the income, but he probably wasn't making any money. That's why he moved because he ran out of money. Coming in because you guys donated for a good six months to him, like 500 bucks a night. If he does that three nights a week, that's $1,500 cash for maybe, let's take prep work into that, maybe five hours of work a day. Not even, bro. The money ran out, his lease is up, and now he's got to go. My lease actually wasn't up. I broke my lease a month early and have to pay for the final month of rent uh, back home or whatever the fee is to get out of that. And, I mean, this just doesn't make any fucking sense at all. I don't even know why I'm arguing with it. I ran out of money. And so because I ran out of money, I embarked on a very expensive trip across the world to save money. But this just makes a great story. You can tell a bullshit artist anywhere. Marco is a phenomenal bullshit artist. He believes what he's saying. There's no way he got run out. He's actually, he's probably leases up and he's going back with family. Hero never defeats the villain. His lease is up and he's moving back in with his family on their first meeting. The hero always loses the first time. And then he goes back, you know, to the back cave and he watches the footage over again. And he, I actually, yeah, bad dog says, I love how Dom acts like he knows what Marco's life is. That's like with Scott and Peter too. I love when they make their base. It's basically fan fiction when they do their uh, shows and they talk about like my Marco's one bedroom apartment and uh, whatever else they talk about. It's so funny to me because they know so little except for what I put out there that they still cling to it. Like when I was talking about uh, last year when I told that story about me dating that cheerleader and uh, Scott and Peter have referenced that like so many times, but they've tried to like put a spin on it to make it bad. Like Scott Johnson being like, yeah, Marco was sleeping with this hot young cheerleader and blah. <laughs> it's like, how, how can y'all possibly flip that? Or like even when some dope shit happens to me, they'll try to flip it to make it negative. They'll be like, Scott Johnson will be laughing like, yeah, Marco made $500 on his stream last night. Isn't that so stupid? <laughs>
<laughs> Marco made five hundred dollars on his stream last night. People are so dumb. <laughs> yes, Scott, that's true. Uh, if something bad happens to you, they'll laugh and say you deserved it. If something good happens to you, they'll try to flip it and say that it was actually something bad. You can't make this shit up. He thinks about something he saw, and he analyzes his enemy's weaknesses, and then he formulates a plan and makes a new suit, a new strategy, and comes back better, and he wins. And every time my enemy makes a move, I learn that little bit more about them, and I can adjust my strategy to be more efficient and more effective. And that is what this move is about. Okay, so with okay. all due disrespect to these psychopaths and scammers who perpetuate the big lie of MLM all over the world, please know I refuse. I refuse to be bullied. I refuse to fold. I refuse to stop telling the truth. Fuck you. Aside from the cult harassment related reasons, Canada, as you may have heard, is in the middle of a housing crisis right now. I'm oh, okay. in a privileged position. Donate to my PayPal. Donate to my... Go Why does he not even wait? He doesn't even wait to see if the thing he's saying is right or wrong. He should have literally watched the entire video first and then just gone on one long run-on thing rather than pausing it because I actually don't say that. Go fund me. Oh, donate to my... Whatever he's got. His other this is a grift for money. This is a scam. He is scam. He's offered nothing. No proof of lawsuit. No no information. Unless he's got a website for that, he 100% could put that uh, lawsuit up online. He could create his own website. www.marcosgettingsued.com. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to inform you, Dominic, that you just simply don't know enough about the Canadian legal process, and that is not true. And post because it should be available in his court systems under being filed already. It's public. You, you can. You can go look it up. I can't publicize it, but you can absolutely go look it up. Look, all you gotta do is do a FOIA for it, right? Put it up online. Here it is. Here's my legal fees. I need Yeah. It. Rachel says, yes, when I'm broke, I too run away to another country where I know no one. So I I'm actually curious to see if he's going to expand on that idea more because a moment ago he said, I ran out of money, so I probably moved back in with family. But then how does that factor into me coming over to where I am now? Because first he said he he's moving to save money which he knows I'm in a different part of the world, but then also I'm back with family. So which one is it? You help with it? 100%. This is a grift for money. He is very good at this. And for those who donated, you deserve what you get too. Why would I need to do all of this if this was a grift for money? Here, this is me making a mistake and trying to like think logically about something that's absolutely fucking insane. But let me just try. If what Dominic's saying is true, that I am just doing this as a grift for money, why would I not have plugged up, uh, what are they, what's it called? GoFundMe. Why would I not have asked for money in the video? That would have made sense, right? Why would I talk about all the shit I talk about? Why couldn't I just make, why couldn't the video have been two minutes long? Hey guys, I'm getting sued. Give me money. If that was all it was, why would I need to go into this elaborate explanation about the cult information control and harassment and people stalking me and the Instagram shit and the death threats. Why would I need to do all of that if this was just about money? And then I never even make a call to action for anyone to give me any fucking money. So it's a grift, but if it is a grift, I'm, I'm pretty bad at grifting then, I guess. I'm just, trying to tr I'm just trying my best to understand how he could even possibly look at it like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to stream for a month, meaning I'm not going to make any of this money that he claims I was making from live streaming. If I was a grifter, wouldn't I have just continued to do that more? And then moving to another part of the world where I don't know anyone and I don't speak the language. If, I, if it was just about money and this was just some lavish excursion for me, why wouldn't I? It just doesn't make sense. I'm trying. I'm really trying to be Team Dominic here. And I'm very grateful because I get to be a YouTuber for a living and support myself and pay my bills as a result of the generosity of you, the people who support me. You may have noticed I don't have sponsors on this channel. Most sponsors, when I talk to them, they don't. Yeah, exactly, Tretino. What is the grift? Like, I'm actually trying. Like, I know, I know. Like, I'm pretending that I'm not me right now and I'm trying to step outside of myself and just pretend to be like a third party objective viewer of the Dominic versus Marco thing and see who I side with. And I just can't. I just can't figure it out they don't want me to promote it youtube does not pay you what they think they do at all youtube does not pay me what they think they do what the fuck does that even wrong button what the fuck does that even mean youtube doesn't pay me what they think they do i'm pretty sure youtube does pay me what they think they do <laughs> you're just saying words i've got 121,000 
subscribers to a channel that's 10 years old. It's a martial arts channel. Um, people are into affiliate sponsoring and affiliate marketing. They do not pay anymore. Doesn't happen that way. They figure just like all of the anti MLMers do click my link. I'll get credit for. Yeah. I don't do that because that's whack to me. I, I, I personally, people have offered me and people continue to offer me those sponsorships that are like no risk to them. They don't want to give me the cash up front. They want to do these affiliate deals where it's like, I could have signed up for it myself without them fucking reaching out to me where it's like, Hey, Marco, we'll give you a percentage of Ridge wallet. You promote Ridge wallet in the video and, uh, or promote our VPN and we'll give you a percentage of the amount of people uh, of the amount that gets sold. And here's the portal, the link that you can use to, uh, track your sales. I don't want to fucking do that. That sounds like another job to me that I'm going and checking on how many affiliate sales that I got. And also, how do I know that the portal that you're giving me access to, how do I know that the numbers in there are accurate? How do I know you didn't go in there and change the number to say that I only sold five and so that I only get paid when really I sold 500? It's like, I don't know, I don't trust that shit. Cash up front or nothing. So it's nothing. Or this and that, you're not gonna get sponsorship. Marco may not, he's, he has an average of about 20,000 views per video, maybe. Maybe his YouTube channel is about, I'm going to say between five to a thousand dollars a month is maybe what he's making, right? That's not enough to live off of. It's crazy how so many people have asked me this over the last four, almost five years. They speculate about like how much money I'm making on my channel, or they use these websites that are so inaccurate, like social blade. And they're like, Marco, you must be, you know, this is why Scott and Peter have that whole thing of like that. I'm secretly a big drug Lord because they look at these websites and they think, Oh, he, he can't be making that much money. But these people are not factoring in the multiple revenue streams. They're not factoring in the merch store, which they don't always mark merch.com, which they don't have access to the analytics for. They're not, they don't have access to my Patreon, which they don't, they don't know how much I'm making on Patreon. They're not tallying up the amount that I'm making on every live stream. Every live stream is different. Sometimes people drop bags on live stream. Let's see on this live stream, on this live stream, there's only been $50 dropped. So did I only make $50 this month? They're not tallying. They don't know the true numbers of ad revenue that's coming in because my new videos are not the only ones I get paid on. Most of the time, the videos that get me the most views in a month are my infiltrating a pyramid scheme videos, which all came out in previous years. So my catalog, you know, is, is responsible for most of the ad revenue. So it's very interesting how these people have these speculations about how I'm broke. You know, they constantly do this. Scott and Peter, have been doing this since I had like 30,000 subscribers saying that I'm going to be broke and my channel is dying. Now we're here. I think I'm going to crack 90,000 subscribers in the next 89.7. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to crack 90,000 subscribers in the next little bit here. We're at 89,709. So uh, anyway, very interesting. So again, you, the grift is you guys have to come to him to donate and he's got to make a story. This is network marketing. The anti MLM, what they've have right. And what I agree. YouTube cooks the books when they pay Marco hilarious. Agree with is they tell a sob story for you to wind up enrolling. A sob story. He's telling a sob story with what were they? The financial embellishment. Trey Tino says, when I'm rich, I'm going to pay you the dumbest sponsorship cash up front. Good. I'll do a whole video just on some bullshit. It's giving once you're done burying yourself. And you're in a hole that's so fucking deep. I'm going to show you just how stupid you really are. I mean, yeah. When, when Peter Mingle said that, Peter Mingle said exactly what Enpaz quoted. Once you're done burying yourself and you're in a hole that's so fucking deep, I'm going to show you just how stupid you really are. What does it mean? <laughs> when he doesn't know quite what to say, he throws word salad out there. Yep. Yeah. The health embellishments, he's giving you embellishments on what's going on for him. So you will. Oh, yeah, my OnlyFans too. Yep. Will give him money. He's doing the same thing that he accuses everybody else of. Their product or service because all of my best performing videos, if they do good, there's a high chance they just get taken down anyways. So why would you want to spend advertising dollars on a video that might not even. Nobody does, Marco. A week from they the don't spend it, it on their way. So yours. thank you for watching this and thank you. That's my point. Thank you. If you're a supporter on Patreon or a YouTube channel member, it literally there is you go. because of you that I can do this. And there you go. Got him.
and continue to make this content that helps so many people. So I figured, fuck it, all of my income is generated online anyways. I could go to a country that A, I've never been before, which would just be a nice travel experience and adventure in itself, but also I could take advantage of the currency arbitrage in other parts of the world where my money would stretch farther. And sure. me being abroad, not in Canada, would allow me to show how- Wow, crazy how he didn't argue that. How globally harmful multi-level marketing scams are and show the impact that they have yeah. in more impoverished countries as opposed to just showing their effects in North America. So again, this is a calculated adaptation. If he's, <laughs> if he's getting harassed and bullied <laughs> in Canada, what if he goes to some other country where over there, they'll cut your hand off for fucking spreading false information or messing with their income. Best of luck to you, Marco. Have at it. So that I can continue this work that I'm so passionate about and that I know is so important and so needed. Right now, I can tell you that I'm in a safe location and very soon I'll okay. be coming to you from somewhere in the world. I'm yeah. not gonna say yet, but yeah. you'll see eventually. Yeah. Thank you again for supporting and being here. And uh, yeah. <laughs> He's my favorite dude. Dominic, you're my favorite dude. I actually love that Dominic gets so much joy from my videos because at least when I make a video reacting to Dominic, I know the stream is up. I'm getting the bag from the ad revenue, the donations from people supporting. The fact though that Dominic continues to do the videos when he's not even monetized, mwah, I love it. I, I love it. Let's continue. He is my favorite dude. Oh, man. I, I enjoyed that. It's a scam. He is 100% scamming you uh, for money. End of story. He's looking for you to wind up paying his bills because he wasn't making enough money on the live feeds anymore because he was running out of material. It's the same shit. What do you mean? Says the guy who's literally repeating the same shit. What do you mean, bro? I was making bags still before I took my little hiatus in December. And the reason I took the hiatus in December was A, to spend time with family before I you know, moved away and didn't see them for how fucking long. And also because I was in the process of selling every fucking thing. I, I sold everything. So I didn't exactly have a, a comfortable space to be live streaming. And I sold my PC and I didn't get this laptop until blah, 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 blah. Anyway. Nonstop. If you look at his history, he claimed the stand-up comedy uh, nightclub scene was a scam. Rap. No, I didn't. Was a scam. No, I didn't. He tries things. He fails. Then he claims it's a scam. This is his best scam yet. Marco, well done. But if it is legitimate, you deserve every ounce of what's coming to you. Enjoy it. See you guys in the next video. <laughs> this guy's fucking insane. From <laughs> See, this is his intro clip, is the clip of me and him, where he's like, I'll never apologize. And then him and Jesse Lee Ward, whose death he still continues to milk. And then him in front of a whiteboard, which, look at this, text money. To seven zero eight nine eight two zero nine seven four. Cash flow machine, network marketing. Oh yeah, this is the business owner employee quadrant thing that they love to do. That they, you know, rich dad poor dad fucking bullshit. Insane. Absolutely fucking insane. I I love it. We you love you gotta love it. We love Dominic, don't we all? Let me go ahead. We made it through. Let's, let's, come on now. Come on now. Thanks, Marco. I'm not a loser. Let's indict the motherfucker. Let's indict. Because you'd be in jail. Dominic threw the, the whole video. That you, um, you had, you, you, you could, you do, you, you want, you, you could do so, you, you do, you could, you, you want, you want, him to do you so much you could do anything you know <laughs> gay porn thank you like gay porn dropped a uh, donation and said just got grifted and they dropped ten dollars thank you gay porn great uh great to know that i've scammed yet another person it's uh it's it's amazing frankly look at how we're scamming people oh G dominic gained one subscriber during the uh during us watching that so big up dominic and then uh he has another video here on his channel called uh always marco is always lying i don't know if i have it in me to do a live stream uh reacting to this entire one because this is an hour and a half and i think he has more to say about this one because this is the one where i'm actually only presenting facts i'm only presenting facts uh 
from the FTC's website, from Robert Fitzpatrick's book, and even just as I skim through the little benchmarks here, I can see like he's bringing up, here's his, where was the page? Stats from the direct, the DSF, which is the Direct Selling Association, of course. And this is their, their stats, which, I mean, do you trust the stats of the, of the people perpetuating the scam? I sure fucking don't. It's like, you know, when studies get published about how certain foods are healthy and then you find out that the, the study was funded by the big uh, dairy or big beef or whatever industry, you know, interesting world we live in. We definitely have to watch the movie Thank You for Smoking. I'm, I'm going to try to get an interview with the author because that movie and that book is probably the closest thing that I've um, found to exploring this phenomenon of like the spin doctors of MLM, which as far as I know, there's not an official, I guess the direct selling association would be the spin organization for MLM because they have the lobbying, you know, the lobbying people on K Street and the billions of dollars. But the movie is all about uh, a guy who lobbies in favor of cigarettes. And it's a very interesting movie because it shows like the false equivalencies between you know how they how they justify uh cigarettes and alcohol and defending those and there's one part in the movie where he's arguing like you know more people die in automobile accidents every year than die from smoking cigarettes so should we ban cars and all this it's, it's actually really interesting to see how how corrupt the world is and how willing people are to like spin and construe a story to defend something they, that they know is objectively harmful or objectively poisonous simply because there's so much money to be made doing so. It's crazy. Marco made $60. Now he can afford to live for three weeks in a third world country. So true. Yeah, literally. Um, appreciate you, Miss Casual Viewer. Rap Scam sounds like a sick song. Dominic's martial arts channel gets zero views. Who cares how many subscribers he has? Well, yeah, that's why he makes... So, damn, that's crazy. Between the amount of time Dominic spends on, like, Instagram, YouTube... Instagram, obviously, not monetized. YouTube, not monetized. His other YouTube channel, the Kung Fu one, which is presumably monetized, but gets no views, so isn't making any money. And MLM. The four things Dominic Izzo spends his time on none of them pay that's fucking crazy to be at that age where you're old enough to be my dad and don't you don't realize that maybe at least a, a, a percentage of the time that you spend on something should be uh to generate income like a per, i said that weird a percentage of your time in your day should be spent generating income you know, that's crazy. Trey Tino says, Dominic's jealousy can't be a passport bro like our king. Hilarious. I honestly, it's crazy to think that Dominic is sticking with this narrative, which I specifically said in the video, it's not the case that I'm like running and hiding. Dude, I've been having such an amazing time uh, where I am right now. And I, I do miss my family, of course. But like, I'm so happy that I made this decision. And I'm so grateful that y'all are supporting me being out here and, and doing this. Thank you, Jared. Uh, call that... Call that pussy or drop a bag. Thank you, Jared. Um, yeah, I'm having the time of my life right now. And uh, yeah, he's using Marco for clout. I mean, hey, you said it, not me. <laughs> you said it. <laughs> oh, cool, cool. I can click on people's names now and see channel activity. And it shows me like all the comments that they've made on my channel. That's hard. That's hard. Wow. Now I can see if someone tells me they're a fan, they've been watching for a long time in the chat. I can just click channel activity and see if they're telling the truth. Um, <laughs> don't trust big yogurt. So true. So true. Nobody knows more about yogurt than me, frankly. Big chicken. Tyson food never did anything wrong. Juice plus is hard AF. Only real warriors can sell the product, right? Yeah. Juice plus, bro. You're in a company called Juice Plus, and you're a, and you're talking about how everyone else is soft. 
you're in a company called Juice Plus. Can't make this shit up. This generation knows nothing about juice. A bunch of pussies. <laughs> Joseph says, 50% of my day is spent generating cum. <laughs> right on. No doubt. No doubt. Um, so funny. Been watching for a long time, says Thomas. Let me click the channel activity. Okay, he, he, he has a, he has low key. Um, hope Marco doesn't see my past Drake remarks. I'm clicking right now, Patrick. Hmm. Okay, I see you. Imagine you find someone's old hate comments before they were a fan. So funny. Sheriff of Juice World. There's also a, a comment on. There's a comment on Dominic's, uh, whatchamacallit, on that video. Actually, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna, address, I'm not even gonna address it. Or maybe I will. Y'all know who, Enpaz and Legend Gaming and Specs and Sam here, y'all know who I'm talking about. Y'all know, y'all know the comment I'm talking about. Don't stoop. He shouldn't stoop, but I will. Um... Nah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm too, I'm too good of a guy. I'm too good of a guy. What can I say? Um, damn. Well, that's all I really got to say. How long have I been doing this stream? Two hours? Yeah, that's good. I mean, I want to get back to doing two a week. I know before I took my little break in, uh, in December, I was doing one a week. I got to get back to two, though. You know, after not streaming for a month in December, I feel like I got a lot of bars to get off. So, you know, I think I should do two. <laughs> bars. I uh, know. What y'all think? What y'all think? Two for now? Then maybe I'll go back to one because I still got more to talk about. Definitely. Wednesday and uh, we could do Wednesday and Friday or Wednesday and Saturday if I'm not late. Maybe actually see the problem for me is. If I want to do a Friday night stream for y'all, I have to do it on Saturday morning for me because that's the time difference. So if I want to do it on Friday night, I have to do it on Saturday morning for me, which means that if I want to, that, which means I basically can't do anything on Friday night because I have to be up early on Saturday morning. And likewise, if I want to do the stream on Saturday night for y'all, it has to be Sunday morning for me. So right now it's Sunday morning. Which I don't really mind, but you get me. Make up bars. Um, appreciate you, Nightwing. Appreciate you, Kylie. 20 streams a week. You won't. Two, two, two. I know a very manipulative toddler that needs a Marco t-shirt. LOL. Bring back weekend Marco streams. It's Saturday for y'all, right? Marco needs to enjoy his Friday night. <laughs> I miss dedicating my Friday and Saturday nights to your lives. Okay, Kylie, I got you. Maybe I'll do, remember when I used to do three a week? I used to do three a week, and sometimes they were fucking seven hours long and shit. Uh, let's see. We can do it. We can, we can make it happen. Almost at 100K subscribers. I mean, I don't know what to tell y'all. We're here. We're up. Yeah, I'll keep the schedule the same. You were here all three nights. Appreciate y'all. Uh, you know, as you guys know, this is a cult and this is a grift. This is a scam. I am scamming you, uh, according to Dominic Izzo and everyone else in MLM and the companies who sue me who claim I'm just doing this for money. Uh, you know what? One last thing. I keep meaning to bring this up. I've thought about this a lot. And I might have said something like this before because, you know, Dominic says that it's always the same script. I, uh, I love... And I'm astounded by, and I'm flabbergasted by, and I'm flummoxed by. You never hear people say the word flummoxed. You know what? You also never hear people say, yoo-hoo. It's only in cartoons. Nobody ever goes, yoo-hoo. Um, I'm always stunned by the fact that, you know, Dominic or Scott and Peter or the companies that are suing me or the people who are still brainwashed by MLM, 
will always resort to the fact that I make money on YouTube as some like evidence that that's the only reason I'm doing it. Or it, it somehow, you know, me making money on YouTube somehow invalidates what I'm saying or proves that what I'm saying is not true. I, I find that so interesting because literally every every job makes money making money off of a thing is not proof that that thing is bad or is not proof that that's the only reason you're doing it doctors make money teachers make money would you not trust a doctor because you're like oh yeah well you get paid to treat my broken leg so of course you're gonna say it it's like no what the fuck you know so yeah of course and this is why i've never shied away from this like type of uh claim because it's true i do make money doing this and i'm proud to make money doing this just like a teacher who makes money teaching because they love to do it it's doubly fulfilling they get to teach which is the thing they love to do and they make money off it which means they pay their bills and whatever the fuck although teachers could be paid more but you get me i feel the exact same you know and it's like <laughs> it's also crazy because people in mlm will say like marco talks bad about mlms he doesn't want you to give your money to MLM. Yeah, but I'm also not telling people to, hey, save your money on MLM and just give it to me. All I care about is saying, hey, don't give your money to MLM. And as a consequence of the good karma of that, people, generous people, you know, I don't know how, that would actually be interesting to see is out of a thousand people who ever stumble on a video of mine, how many of them actually go, yeah, this guy's dope. Let me support and drop a bag. But even just the, you know, collateral uh, support, the direct support of the people who do choose to like uh, drop a bag is enough for me to be a full-time YouTuber without me having to be like, hey guys, buy this thing or, you know, don't give your money to MLM, give it to me. It's like, that's all I really, you know. And even then I don't need to fucking do any of it. If I'm making good videos, YouTube will pay me the money for the videos, you know. It's crazy. Where I am right now, I, uh, oh shit, oh shit, no way, where is, come on, Julie, wow, Julie, Marco, Marco, no way, okay, hold on, it's all about residual income, Obama, money, crazy, let's indict the mother. Thanks, Marco. Wow. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. And thank you. Congrats to the people who got those memberships. Turn in the chat green. Hashtag make the chat green again. Uh, is the background a green screen or real? You'll never know. Every job makes money except for MLM, right? The ultimate irony. Um, no one does vocabulary like me. So true. Um, Three, three a week was great, but my boyfriend hated you. So funny. Uh, yeah, that's actually a super bar right there. Super bars. Every other thing makes money except, ironically, the, the MLMs that people are defending and using me making money as a defense for why I'm scamming. LOL. Sila, Jared, Thomas, Rachel, MM, Bad Dog, Aerie, Chris, 711 Manager, CE, all got them green in the chat. But for some reason, Julie herself doesn't have a green in the chat. Y'all, Somebody else better gift the membership so Julie can get one. That ain't right. That ain't right that Julie's gifting other people going green, but she herself isn't green. Come on, y'all. Fix it. Thank you, Julie. Julie got scammed. Damn, Julie got scammed. That Ray Higdon sound gets me every time. You like that one? I like it too. <laughs> Amazing. Um, yeah. But what was I what was I even saying? Thank you, Julie. Yeah, people making money off of something is not somehow evidence or proof that that they're scamming or doing something wrong. But hey, this is this is the journey, you know, this is the this is the war we wage with fucking insanity. I was actually, I'm sure she could tell because of the passion in my voice. 
but this interview that I did yesterday with this French, I don't know if it was a magazine or a newspaper or what, I did this interview with her about MLM and she was asking me, you know, Robert Fitzpatrick has talked about this too, how frustrating it is when you talk to journalists and reporters about MLM and they ask you these questions in such a delicate, candy, you know, sugar-coated way and they handled the subject with kid gloves when they know the truth. So what is... So what makes MLM different than a pyramid scheme? And it's like, fuck, here we go again. You know, okay, well, what, what do you know a pyramid scheme to be? Okay, well, what if I told you the traits that, I, that define pyramid scheme are the exact same traits that are present in every MLM? Oh, well, maybe we can't publish this story because we might, you know, my editor doesn't want us to publish this because we might get sued for it. It's like, bro, everyone is scared to say the truth because MLM is so big and so powerful and so all-encompassing that, I don't know, man, it's really 1984 shit, bro. Revisionist history, that video that came out that exposed the truth never actually happened, and on and on and on. It's just madness. Cray Higdon, $5 for Ray Higdon sounds, please. I got you. Let me crank it up, too, for you. Let me crank it up for you. I'm going to hit you with it right now. Nope, not that one. Ready? Ah! There you go. <laughs> ah! I love it. Yeah, well, another day, another dollar. Fighting the cult of MLM here in front of my green screen. And uh, ma copale français confirmé? Oui, je petit pas. J'ai tout des... Français dans l'école pour huit ans. Uh, when you do the Trump voice, my son says, Daddy, sounds like you when you do Donald Trump voice. Yeah. Ray Higdon, a.k.a. Skeletor. Yeah, go support Julie. I got to do another stream with Julie, too, now that I'm settled, more or less. In the world of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. And Paz, is that an original? Because if it's not, you should take credit for it. <coughs> Bars. <laughs> Dominic needs an emoji. Another day, another victory for the OG. Um, anyways, y'all. Appreciate it. We did it. We did it, y'all. We did it. Let's indict the mother. God did. That you Billions and billions. Chocolate, chocolate Ladies and gentlemen, oh, because you'd be in jail. We got him. He's beginning to believe. I'm getting these sounds back. Shut up, bitch. Longhorn. <laughs> the goals, man. The goals. Nice. Well, you know, we're always, we're here at the end of the stream. And at the end of the stream, even though I've said everything I got to say for that day, it still, it still hurts me to click the button. It still hurts me to click the button and end the stream because I always have so much fun. I don't want to end it, um, you know. So, what can you do? Thank you for the gibbity gob. Melanie, what up? Sorry you missed it. Watch the replay. Watch the replay. I'm straight, but French Marco doing something to me. Hilarious. His mama is right here. Where's that one at? I got that one on here somewhere. His mama. His mama is right here. Gotcha. All right, you guys. Uh, I will do the Wednesday, which I guess for me, Thursday morning, I could do that. I could swing that. Appreciate you guys. Um, I have another video I'm working on, which I'm really excited about because this one delves not only into MLM, but also like, you know, uh, talking about the world and capitalism and debt and the financial system. It's, it's a really... I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to fit all these topics into one video because it really could be several videos, but um, I'm excited about it because I'm planning on making it a video different than the ones you've seen on my channel before, which is usually me sitting behind a desk and explaining some shit and having pop-ups on the screen. This one's actually going to be me like in a setting. You're going to see my legs type shit. So uh, yeah, excited for that. Appreciate you guys. Love y'all. Thank you again for all the support, all the people who got scammed and grifted uh, by me, who donated, and Julie especially, uh, who was brainwashed by the cult of Always Marco and dropped the 10 memberships. Thank you very much. Let's continue fighting the world 
of multi-level marketing, fighting evil, and making the world a better place. Later! Peace, peace! Oh, this is not as optimized as the machine. I should have brought the stream deck out here. I had room in my suitcase. Peace!